All righty, friends. Welcome to the National Capital Curling Center, home of the Potomac Curling Club and the Brunch Spiel. It's a five and under open, and uh, we are here on Sheet B. Our games today are a B event uh Matchup? Second round. Second round between Omelette You Hit and Roll out of Potomac Curling Club and Stroop Waffle out of Broomstones. Two legacy powerhouse GNCC clubs facing off against each other. I am here at the eight foot folding table with Alan McNeil. Alan, How good you morning. Doing? Good morning. How are you, Joe? I'm doing just fine. Excellent. And always oh, on our cameras today, Alan. Uh, that would be uh, Dylan Klensky. Dylan. Yes. yes, yes, yes. So, guys, we just did the coin toss. So, Turn on your waffle irons and get out your champagne sabers, and we're going to get curling. All right. Both of these teams were on the losing side of uh, games in their first round. They were both very hard fought. I was actually, I actually called both of them yesterday. Um, it seemed like they both played two also very good teams. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I haven't actually seen any complete bad teams in this bond spiel, which for a five and under is actually Pretty a little impressive. bit of a surprise, yeah. but yeah. that's a wonderful thing, which is not terribly surprising as <laughs> this is a qualifier to go to nationals. That's right. They got a five and under nationals, which is going to be in Hibbing, Minnesota. Right. Yes. Um, I will be there the week before, actually, at the last chance bond spiel. That's the getting the ice ready for them? Uh, that's right, man. Okay. It's a seven-sheet seven, seven sheet club way up in the iron range. Uh, you know, it's it's not at the most exotic place in the world, but the club itself is fantastic. So that is interesting. Yeah, yeah, I've been there uh, three times. I'm going to be my fourth time up there. Oh, very nice. Uh, the week before, at the last chance, and it's going to be great. Oh, it looks like they've decided who's going to throw here. So uh, Stroop Waffle Stroop is going to be throwing the first, and they have a redstone in the hack. So there we go. That means. Uh, no, wait a minute. I actually, actually, I'm let you hit and roll. Is throwing first. Oh, that's right, because I don't recognize that guy. He's the, he's the one guy that he plays out of Detroit. This is uh, Sean Hutzko, uh, okay. buddies with the skip, Paul Luthi. All right, and Sean's first stone is coming out. He's being asked to do a stereotypical opening play. First first stone, first draw, center guard, somewhere in the three neighborhood. Paul's not going to mind if it drifts into the house a little bit, but he's hoping for a solid three. Looks like he's going really to get it. Might overcurl a couple inches, but not enough to really be a problem. Beautiful start That's to the game. Fine. Hey, Alan, let's talk about the other games going on now yes, while let's. we have uh, got. So on sheet A, it's going to be Steam and Waffle out of Bucks County, and they're going to be playing Waffle House against Potomac. Right. Oh, there's Steven, a theme. Steam and Waffle being different than Stroop Waffle. Yes. <laughs> Very important to keep that <laughs> I'd straight. expect nothing less at a brunch field. Right. Uh, sheet C, Team Scaby out of Mayfield yep. mm -hmm. against Team O'Reilly out of Ardsley and Granite. All righty. That's the one all the way out in Seattle. Yes, I believe so. Nice. And those are two A event games, if my memory serves me right. Your memory serves you correct. And then on Sheet Bravo, we've got the Broomies out of Broomstones against, but what about Second Breakfast yes, from and Virginia and Triangle? And those were the other two teams that suffered less than successful outcomes in their first games. I see. So, yes. All um, right. So because of the way that these uh, draws work for this tournament and the qualification process works, teams that lost yesterday already can't make can't get the spot to qualify for nationals you basically have to win the whole darn shooting match oh is that which okay. is going to involve going undefeated Woo. um yeah um but they are of course still in they're in the b event which is perfectly wonderful yeah um they're still in the in the in the running to play on sunday etc etc so uh, progressing through the end here um Paul's early guard, well not Paul's early guard, actually it was Stephen Hutzko who threw it, got promoted into the eight foot by Stroop Waffle and they threw their second stone up now as a, I think they wanted it to come a little more towards the center yeah. than they did. They were playing that come around when they had that accidental recentered guard yeah. replaced. So this is the Stroop Waffle second. Um, Timothy. Uh, second, now it's be the second now, Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan uh, Hickey. Hickey. Or actually, am I wrong? Is this still lead? That is still the lead. Yeah, I'm it's still, sorry. yeah. Uh, Timothy, he told me how to pronounce it like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, Balasser. Right. There we go. All right, very good. I completely blamed the, uh, blame, blame the lack of mimosas. <laughs> I was distinctly promised mimosas. We can make that happen. I'm sure we can. We so will make that happen. That stone uh, popped up and kind of split the other yellow over a little bit. So now yellow has two stones. 
they may be in the free guard zone. They may be biting. Kind of tough to say. Um, they are biting. I can see on another see, camera. See they're biting? Okay. Yep. And um, one of those is blocking the current shot stone possessed by Omelette. You hit the roll. Um, although not really so much from the outside. Oh, well, actually, hey, pretty well even from the yeah, outside. Yeah, pretty bare both sides. Pretty but Omelette, um, you hit and roll is, I think they were trying for a draw around. I don't think they got the mustard for it. I think nah. it's going to be a guard up. I think it's going to be oh, a hog rock. Hogged. Wow. Oui. Okay, we're going to guard the back line. <laughs> it happens. <coughs> there was actually, so during a couple of the games yesterday, there were mm -hmm. some, there were some, there were some hog fests. Ah. Much, much bacon got slaughtered. <laughs> it was, it was unfortunate. I, well, it appropriately was, enough at a brunch field. I know, right? Yeah. Um, <coughs> what was going on, it appeared on sheet B, and I've actually kind of noticed this in the last couple of league games. Mm -hmm. It feels like from about eh, a third of the way down the sheet to about eh, two thirds of the way down the sheet. Mm -hmm. Um, a stone which feels like it's hot coming out of the hand just checks up. Yeah, yeah. It just, it, it, it's like it's running through glue instead of a long ice. Interesting. Um, and it's 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 afflicted a lot of teams, huh. and it's kind of been a question of especially these five and unders who aren't necessarily as experienced. Yeah. Um, how quickly did they catch on Whoop. that they need to do that? And while I was blabbing, they attempted to draw around a little too hot, a little too hot, but they executed a very well. You know. If they had needed to draw through that hole, <laughs> it's there. they now know the weight and the and the weight and the line for that. Um, not as useful as it might seem, unfortunately. So here's Kevin Ames with rock number two. Again, looking for that come around around those two yellow guards. Yes. This looks like it's got a little bit more steam it out of the does. hand. It does. Probably about the right to stop in the house. I'm not 100% <laughs> sure it's going to curl back, though. You know, I don't think top 12 would be too bad either. Just yeah. leave it, you know, in the house, kind of high. Yeah, no, it's definitely in. It's definitely in. Actually, this is actually kind of a problem. Yeah, now it's, it's doubleable. It's drifting in far enough. So if Stroop Waffle is willing to tackle the outside of the ice. No, they're not. Which five and unders, they're, they're scared of it, yeah. understandably. I sure. Mean, Fifteen and unders are too, trust me, yeah. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they're going to try it again. They're going to try that good draw again. Um... I don't know that they were actually attempting to draw. I think they were actually planning on tapping their side. Oh, tapping it. Oh, that makes sense with the way the, the broom is set, right. yeah. Um, I kind of like that call. Yeah, I do too, because if executed perfectly, they got a chance of getting the sort of the button, and they're still leaving the guard there. It's actually a little easier than the draw just because of the positioning of that redstone. Um, this is going to be a little light. It is going to tap the other one it clearly into the ring. Wow, that, it's still third, though. Yes. Yeah, Red's still sitting two with cover in front. Yeah, although I mean that 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 outer of the two Reds, it is still a doubleable thing. Sure. If Stroop Waffle has has anybody who is enjoys taking those wide hits, which I think uh, Paul is going to call for guard here. Just kind of continue to chunk it out. And this I mean, is Jamie Belfontaine, the vice skip for um, let you hit and roll. Yes. Um, Jamie is. Even for a Canadian, he's nice. Like, he's above regular nice. Regular Canadian nice. He is, he's, like, above that. He is almost obscenely nice. It's wonderful. And, and, I got to give Jamie a lot of credit, too. He's in his third year, and he's already running a program here at Potomac Curling yes. Club for and, people and who just he, want more experience. And he also has perfect T-line draw weight. Yeah. yeah. Just <laughs> <evidence>. <laughs> so, great all around, Jamie. We Jamie loved it. Jamie we loved Bella it. Fontaine, we'd like to take this opportunity yes. to bow down and worship you because, <laughs> frankly, you're a better crawler than I am, and you're only in your third year. And he's a great volunteer. Yes. And the man likes to Bonsfield. I'll I think he's been to Pittsburgh like 46 times. I one time invited him. We asked him to come to a Bonsfield in Pittsburgh, which he accepted, while he was driving home from a Bonsfield in Pittsburgh. That's great. Yeah. And it wasn't his third. It was like his third time there already. He only <laughs> played for like two years. So we'd like to welcome our uh, audience on the YouTube. So far, about 24 folks, which for a 9 a.m. on a Saturday, wow. not bad. Wow. Um, if you have any questions or if you have root interest on any of the teams, want us to make sure we keep a special eye on one of the other sheets, let us know. And we will be more than happy to keep you updated on that as the events more. And we'll keep those scores updated right as when they hang can. the scores. Yeah. So if you have a friend from a team on the other sheet, and you want to know what the score is and your buddies with their vice, 
we'll yell at them to hang the score so you can know how they're doing. So that was an excellently played. I'm not 100% sure it was the plan, although it the worked. raise was. Yeah. It does only cut down, cut red down to one, but that yellow is now the second shot stone. Yeah. And uh, takes out, and it's not, they're, Omelet, hit, omelet you hit and roll is not going to be able to take that yellow out without sacrificing that back red. Mm -hmm. There's no, no way. Physics is not there. No. So that's a great cut down shot. All right. Paul Second making a wise move here, just again throwing a guard up. Sure. He's in it. He's he, he doesn't have hammer this end. Yeah. So steal a one is great. Is great. Force a one, perfectly adequate. No big deal. Kind of junk up the, take the double raise out, especially since the other team just demonstrated an ability to do it. That's lovely. And uh, maybe a little. Ah, it's, I think he got it. I think if he tries to go red enough. yellow, I don't think he can do it. No, he definitely can't go red yellow. I'm actually wondering if he can conceive of going yellow yellow red. Ah. But I think even that other yellow that's kind of corner froze on that, the second yellow in that low line of three. I think that takes that shot out too. Yeah. I know I wouldn't want to do it. Yeah. And so the uh, Jonathan Hickey, the uh, vice for Stroopwafel. He is this is Tyler Holloway, the vice. Tyler Holloway. Oh, sorry, you're right. We're going the wrong. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm reading badly. And Daniel and McGurk is our skip. Yes. And they are. Looks like they're just cleaning up the top. Speakers got on it quickly as though they're a little concerned about an overcurl. This ice has been very swingy all weekend. <laughs> Whoa, um, it's falling off a cliff boy, now. they need to be concerned about that overcurl because they actually, so what all did that do? So that actually did what they wanted it to yeah. do because <laughs> the line to the shot stone is exposed. now wide open. I don't think that was their planned call, but you know when you got more than one option, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you're going to see a lot of playing B's and C's and D's in a five and under. That, that is, is for a darn true sure. Statement. Yes, which I can think makes the game quite exciting. It's 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 a wonderful thing. It is, it is. So, uh, Alan, we didn't have five and under nationals when we were five. No, and we didn't. Uh, yeah, what not, do you think? Not that I would have ever qualified anyhow. What do you What do you think of the concept? So, I like it in terms of um, I've referred to it in some conversations lately as a gateway drug. Um, <laughs> it, it takes these I'm stealing teams, that one. It, I know, right? It takes these teams that are, they're new to the game. They may have watched it as kids or even as adults. They may have, they may have just seen a sign and come to a, come to a learn to curl, whatever. They've been playing social curling for a couple years, yep. which just about every club has a solid, we're going to take you from zero to able to hold your own in a social league. Mm -hmm. Not very many clubs have strong developmental, okay, you're in your second and third year, you're, you've got the basics, mm -hmm. you want to start getting good. Let's get above that first plateau right. that everybody hits. A lot of clubs don't necessarily have that. Mm -hmm. um, those that do, you've that's why that cl their club name is on like the Childs and Kaiser mm -hmm. and Dykes Bonspiel trophies an awful lot. Not to cut you off, but there's a beautiful high that guard there from nice Paul Luthi. That was a nice high Luthi. guard. Anyway. But to continue the thought, the introducing this five and under national championship, which was actually a, a pet project of John Schuster. Yeah, he that's right. He was the one who basically went to USA curling and essentially demanded mm -hmm. um, at a time when he was in a really strong position to make demands because, you know, yeah. gold medal. Gold medal. Um, <laughs> and, um, basically said, hey, I think this would be a great thing. Look what it's done. The GNCC has had five and under tournaments, although they're social, mm -hmm. exceptionally social. Um, they've had those tournaments for, for decades. decades. But he said USCA should consider it as a competitive thing, and it gets the teams in. They're going to play. I mean, they're play, going to play an event in April, like you said, in Hibbing, which is one of the grade A clubs in the, in the station, yep. um, for a shiny trophy. I've seen the trophy. It's yeah, it's shiny. nice. We, uh, Mike Parker, the member of Potomac, won it the first year they had it with his yeah. old Nutmeg team. Yes. And um, you know, the games are officiated, so the team, so they learn about they learn about playing quickly, mm -hmm. and it's just if, even if the teams don't go on to become competitive teams. Mm -hmm. And with the rise of junior developmental and HPP and right. all that kind of stuff, it's kind of unlikely, starting to become unlikely that if you come into the game as an adult, you're going to reach play that highest, highest, highest level. level. Yeah. Um, the dream is still there. It is still possible, but it's a lot more difficult. 
but they will, there are still avenues for these teams even after they graduate from the five and under. There's yeah. club nationals, there's, there's the mixed program. Mm -hmm. um, there's just some really good competitive Competitive avenues. Events for, out yeah. for bond spiels. For, and, and, yeah, just, and just, yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. So and, I, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with you, and I think this, ooh, this is going to be a, that's if perfect. he clips it, oh, that's a peach. It, that's, that's, that's Skip that's, Daniel McGurk. That's not just a peach, that's the whole cobbler. Wow, look at and that. That's, yeah. Sitting so two. yellow lies, yes, to that red wow. in the back. Of the, yeah. That red's no longer scoring and no longer will score, but it is in cut, doing a cut down wow. against five. What a so. beaut. Uh, so, yeah, so I agree. I agree with everything you said with the five and under concept. I think it also, I mean, it's just good. It forces less experienced people, not forces, but encourages Allowed. them, nudges them, allows them yeah. to get out and just play at other events, yes. play at other clubs, exactly. play with other people. And, I mean, you know, to me, I've, this, is, this is the 15th, 16th season I've been playing. Like the thing I like the most is going out. One of the things I like the most is going out and playing at other clubs and meeting other people. And, Absolutely. you know, this opens that opportunity exponentially for these 500 yes. players. Now the only thing USA curling, USA curling needs to do is develop an event where people who are stick curlers can play, and they will finally cover the whole spectrum. Yes. They have that in Canada, don't they? Uh, yeah, they have a whole stick world championships. Yeah. I've yeah. actually considered talking Dan into it. Um, we probably will one year just as a lark. Sure. Um, but it is a different game. Yeah. They only play two, two, two on two. There is no sweeping. Oh. It's one player is at one end of the ice. The uh -huh. other player, it's, it's, it is literally shuffleboard on yeah, ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so here comes Paul with his final rock. Just trying to get around that red guard for the cut down. And he succeeded in that yeah, he's regard. He's got around, but I feel like it's going to be a little heavy. Maybe Let's wrong. see. Where's it going to go? Wrong. Where's it going to go? Depends on how good the other team sweep it. Yeah, it's it, enough to, it's, it's a little ooh, deep. Ooh, just a hair deep. A little sweepy deep. It's a good try. But it looks to me likely that, well, no, Yellow actually has a pretty uncontested, pretty uncontested draw to the forefoot for three. Or we, they we were talking could about that. try this. Why not? It's this early in the game. If they make it. That is true. There is a, well, it's really actually if they make it, it's only to get a third. Maybe a fourth, not actually a third. It'll be a third, yeah, roll. that's true, you're right. So you're taking a, well, unless, so it's uh, it's 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 aggressive, but it's technically aggressive. the triple's there. You're right, it is kind of there, isn't it? So, yeah, <laughs> take the chance, because if you pull it off, you're putting a boatload up. Yeah, you know, Alan, it's your standard triple for six. Sure, doesn't everybody, <laughs> doesn't ever? I mean, I do. I take uh, it. I totally take it. Because I'm crazy that way. Yeah. Um, actually, that's not true because my vice wouldn't let me. Dan would be like, <laughs> no, take the draw for three, Alan. You're being an idiot um, in the first end of a game. Now, is there any actual danger here? I don't think so because don't, he's not going anywhere he's going near the stone on the button. Yeah. So the only thing, I don't think. Could I lose, he could somehow lose his second shot. Yeah, if it, yeah I guess. That's not even terribly that's, likely. Yeah, it's not terribly likely either. And so, I mean, risk reward wise, okay, you're not going to lose your two. No. No guarantee you're going to make the draw. I mean, it's a pretty uncontested draw, but no right. guarantee. So if you're gonna if you're gonna take a risk, take a risk and go hard. Yeah. I mean, on the unlucky side of the house, it's really unlucky. It's one. Really lucky. It's six. Right. I like those odds. All right, and as soon as this stone uh, is done, it's on the way. We'll give you a report on a couple of games that have finished their first end over on C&D. So the stone's on the way from Stubwaffle. They're coming in. The sweepers are on it hard. Boy, this does not look bad. No, it doesn't. There goes one, one there goes two, two and he Okay, a good effort. Move, but a good effort. We, only, we still only have the two. Yeah. That was that was a solid effort. Yeah, for sure. It That's a... Um, a heck of a skips deuce right there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the vice made the deuce. Yeah, yes, but the yes. Skip, I mean, he took the chance. Yeah, all right. So that gives Stroopwafel a 2 nothing lead after one. Alan, you said you had some scoring I updates. I do. Sheet what do you got? C, Team Skebby, who is playing red, uh, appears to have stolen one based on how the hammer was hung at the, at the far end. Um, likewise, Broomies over on D did the exact same thing against What About Second Breakfast. So a prepare, a based on where the hammers are hung on the scoreboard, we had a couple of first end one point steals over there, uh, making both of those games one nothing. And we got hammer over on A, so we'll find out soon enough. 
So it What's going to happen like, there? From what I'm seeing, it looks like Red has two in the house. Yep. The inner of those full eight foot. Now we're going to cut over to the full full view so we can see. Actually, I lied. They have three in the house. Oh. Steam and Waffle is doing a draw against three, which has a skip. You never enjoy that prospect. The stone is on its way. The sweepers are on it hard, but it's not going to help tight. because they've, yeah, that is not good. Waffle House takes three. I believe they call that a fully loaded omelet. I think that's three at Waffle House. I, you know, um, I haven't been to a Waffle House in a long time, let alone not hung over in a longer time. So, so I don't remember what they call it. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. I mean, I could look it up, but I'm not, <laughs> but I'm not going to. <laughs> so all of our games are now in their second end, which keeps them okay oh, on pace. pace. These games have a two-hour clock. So at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, according to the, you, sometimes in the long shots, you see the clock in the back of the uh, ice shed there. The teams will be allowed to complete the end that they are on, and that's the end and of the game. That's it. Um, yesterday, there were very few games that went eight ends. I mean, two hours for a five and under is pretty tight, but I like it because it does force you to play at a good pace. At a good pace. And Alan, the, these teams are going to need it. At, whichever team qualifies out of here is going to need it at Nationals. No doubt. And, you know, as my golfing buddy, we both know, slow speed, slow play kills. Yes, right? absolutely. So, you know. 100%. Yeah. Now, you know, the two hours, they don't have to finish that eighth end in mm -hmm. two hours. They just have to start it. They, they don't have to actually technically start it. They have ah, to finish, finish the seventh end. I see. Um, and they did that because if... If they were tight on a clock, a team mm -hmm. that might be like, well, you know, I'd really like to kind of measure this stone in the yeah, seventh okay. end. Yeah, that makes sense. Would face a pressure to, well, but I need the eighth end because I need to come back. Yeah, it's not hyper so. strict, but it's right. There's it's a little not, bit of wiggle room, yeah. but not enough to take too much advantage. Yeah, of it. and it's also necessary because we've got these games on a two and a half hour clock. Yeah. So the, where the next draw is going to be at 11:30 this morning, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, I have to be honest. I thought this draw was at 9:30. That's why I wondered. <laughs> <the show's going laughs> um, but, you oh made well. your tea time. I You're good. Just barely. Just barely. I did not have an opportunity to warm up the <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. So here we got a good setup here, Sean. Uh, let's go put up a lovely corner guard. And Timothy has got two sitting in the back of the house. Right. So, so he's playing Paul, to come around here. Yeah, he's playing to come around. He wants to put the stone. I think he wanted to get all the way behind his guard, but failing that, he's okay with being in front of the other yellow. Mm -hmm as a potential catcher, has kind of got a wall to work with. Um, Paul tried in his game yesterday in the eighth end when he had to, he had to, he had to manufacture three without mm -hmm. the hammer. Playing a wall in the back? Uh, he was, well, he tried to use the other team's wall. Yeah. And it did not work out for him because yeah. the other team, the other team discovered an ability to make doubles. Oh, um, that's a beautiful thing. I know, right? Um, and it was kind of like a monkey touched the monolith moment. It was one of those things the other team was like, oh, hey, look, we can get rid of two of these. <laughs> and then they did it again. And at that point, Paul was like, okay, I have lost. And it's a lovely um, hit and roll there by Jonathan Hickey yes, to keep his intact, not get rid of the jam, and eliminate the red rock. Yeah, Great I mean, shot. All of the things were accomplished there. Yeah. That would be, for those of you who are into uh, curling statistics, that would be a four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that call, Paul. Keep that corner guard. Yep. Still manufactured your two. Plenty of curling left. Yep. Lots of catchers in the back. Yep. And he only has the one guard to work with. He's, uh, Kevin Ames, rock number one for him. She, no. yeah, B is, number two. This is not a great house set up at the moment to try to take two, but it's not out of reach yet, particularly at the five and under level. I was going to say, a, five and under. A miss is in play. Um, yep. I'm a little concerned this stone might be one little heavy and I think it's over curling it might actually miss the catcher oh. it did it just squeaked yeah. by it yeah oh that's okay. unfortunate it if you uh, biting it is biting in the back so it could factor into a scoring equation later um, but a lot of stones would have to go away for that to happen so if I was Daniel McGurk from Strip Waffle, I don't think I'd be that concerned about it. Nah. And it appears he isn't. He's basically saying, you know what? Junk it up. Something top eight. We're currently lying three. Let's lie four. Um, yeah, top 12, I think, is perfectly yeah, fine. I, th I think he may have indicated he kind of wants top Well, okay, change, he's, he's changing top his style a bit. Top corner going outside. Top eight corner, so providing right. a little bit of coverage for what is currently his shot. Don't so. hate it either. No, pretty much anything in the top eight, anything in that entire semicircle is fine. Yeah. I can see the logic in wanting to put it in front of his shot stone. It's kind of a scoring guard situation. Mm -hmm. um, so 
his uh, Natalie Natalie canted um, front end, which is uh, Daniel Hickey and Timothy Basilier. This, yeah, I think brings so. The, bring, brought the stuff <laughs> down and put it pretty much where where desired. If someone is on the chat who is following the uh, Stroop Waffle team, we will not be offended if you chat to us his last name spelled in phonetics. Yeah. Again, pardon matter for, of fact, we again, will probably. He literally told me a half an hour ago. We will probably. And it's already we, escaped my yeah, brain. Matter of fact, we will probably offend you a small thank you. Yes. Balasser. Um, <laughs> Balasser. Balasser. Yeah, I think it's Balasser. All right, cool. Nonetheless. I'm prepared to go with that. All right, good. He is Balasser until proven otherwise. All right, so trying to take one of the – does take it out. Take I think he out. wanted to stick around. Yeah, I think he did want to stick around. I think around. he wanted to nose. He didn't quite nose. He rolled a little bit to the outside. Jamie looks like he's like, eh, that wasn't quite what we wanted. Um, as he's skating down, preparing to throw his stones. Yeah, we just, we're, we're just entering Vice Stones now, right? Correct. We are just entering Vice Stones. This is Tyler Holloway with his uh, first rock at the end. All right. And we're taking a quick scan, seeing what's going on on the other sheets. There's no, none, of the, uh, none of the sheets look like there's anything terribly weird going on. No, there's no, no nine enders in play. Yeah. There were some games yesterday where there were like 14, 15 stones in play. No kidding. There were a couple mixed doubles ends where everything was in the forefoot. It nice. Was, it, was a, it was a day one five and under bond spiel. <laughs> all, of, all of the crazy. <laughs> um, and Ben Joe's team from Potomac um, demonstrated why they've already booked their flight to nationals. That's right. With they, a compellingly large victory in their game. They won an event up in Albany, right? Uh, I believe that is correct. Yeah. Back approximately a month ago in order yep. to book their flight. So yep. they are the one team that doesn't have to win this to go to Nationals. Ah, very um, good. In the event that they do win this, I, uh -huh. did, get, I did get a ruling on this because I was curious. Yeah, as a if, official, I would uh, imagine that's you were. Kind of a, yeah, it's kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, if Benjo's team, who has already booked a spot, wins this entire A event, which they are still in the running to do. Yep. They are now in the final 16. Yep. Um, the team that loses the A event final to them gets the spot. Makes sense. Sure. But that is a problem for Sunday early afternoon. Yes. Let's cross that bridge if we get to it. All right. So that was a nice uh, takeout by... Um, I think that was, that was Jamie. That was Jamie who yep. that. Yep. Um, cuts yellow down to one. The unfortunate thing that the roll did do is put the position wrong way, where yeah. taking that, taking the yellow out that is now shot stop is going to be difficult without without also losing either the shooter or the redstone that's behind. Um, unless I suppose you could do it with a very gentle tap. Paul could consider that. And Judging from where Paul is staring right now, Paul is figuring out that trigonometry. He is, he is, looks like he is staring that rock down to figure yeah. out what he can do with it. Which I'm glad because he's trying to, uh, yeah. he's thinking ahead. He's okay. thinking moves yeah. ahead. Correct me if I'm wrong, Paul is actually in a field professionally where that is the kind of thing that he does. Yeah. Yes, that is the thing I mean, that he, he does. He may actually be a legitimate rocket scientist or something like that. Uh, he is a... Um, like an immunologist or microbiologist or okay. something like that. So disease vectors, curling yes. stone vectors, yes. same concept. He does very intelligent, very important oh, work. Oh, that's right. He is the one who wrote the paper describing our, um, <laughs> hey, yeah. so we owe Cassandra Pettit a thank you because it is pronounced bas a -lear. bas -a -lear. Thank yes. you very much, very so much. Thank you, Cassandra. We are good to go. Um, although somebody else disagrees and says it's basil ear. <laughs> so, okay, you guys fight right, it out you amongst, guys, yep, fight amongst yourself and let us know the answer. All right, very Thank good, you. very good. This is uh, Jamie Belafonte in his second rock in, <laughs> in end number two. Uh, looking good so far. He's basically attempting to freeze on the button, and if he does it, that's going to be... That's pretty good. That's pretty good. good. Shrinks the scoring area down, though, but still pretty nice shot. So forces put, uh, forces yes. broomstones to follow her down. That's not the right. That's not the right game, is it? Am I doing it wrong? Did I run the, did I run the button wrong? I ran the button wrong. There we go. Thank We're you. Good. Yeah, that's good. Our technical guy is fixing my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, Paul has successfully. 
guys, it's her last name. Okay, she's got a compelling argument there. Cassandra, <laughs> Cassandra is yielding. Oh, great, and it's getting worse because <laughs> because right immediately after Cassandra said, you know, I'm yielding the field because it's the, it's Julie Basilier's last name. Julie Basilier <laughs> says, ha ha, Cassie is right. That's how the English say it. <laughs> so now I still do not know how to pronounce this guy's last name. We're going to call him Timothy. He's him. the lead. He is Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we want to say thank you all for joining us and watching this today. Welcome this to morning. the Bondspiel. I'm sure this is what you intended to listen to we when you turned into a YouTube feed at 9 a.m. on a Saturday. We hope your chocolate stick chip pancakes are stacked high and your mimosas are strong. Yes. So it appears that Stroopwafel is intending to counter draw basically freeze the stone on it would effectively be on the button which would be a good shot yeah. um, it is pretty precise and the sweepers Looks are already on it it's already over curled it is already gonna so what we're doing instead is we're chipping probably it out, eh? chip, well we're probably raising that yeah we're raising that yellow now he didn't roll far he didn't sweep far enough to get that oh that was close so that looked really close from across. the back here Okay, so all that really did was they took t t took a guard out of play, um, which is which there is a power in that. So Paul is basically attempting to draw. He's basically trying to do the draw do. that the other team just attempted, mm -hmm. essentially. He's got lots of space. He's got yeah. lots of room. He's got some backing. And because of the double backing there, if he could if he could nail this on the lid, if he could put this on the button. That is not going to be easily removable because there's not really enough space between those stones to get any to get any traction. You know, there's nothing to say too that he could put a little bit of weight on it and try to loosen that yellow one off of that red one a little bit, uh, and maybe if he has a chance, play some sort of like run with his last rock. If Daniel, uh, this is his next shot. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah, conceivably, there's, yeah. There's lots of options. Yeah, yeah. All right, so while Paul Stone is on its way, we have a second end on sheet C, a take of one by Team O'Reilly, ties that game up at one after two. O'Reilly, they are out of uh, Ardsley. I believe that is yes. correct. Yes. Oops, over curling two a wee bit here, guys. Oh, yeah. and the granite. Wow, it's actually over curling even more than wow. the other one did. Wow, look at that thing. Is it going to hang on? It could still get enough of the forefoot to be the second shot, though. And it does. Uh, you know, it does. All right, not too bad. Not too bad at all. So, and because of that yellow that's up in the top eight foot, there is no, there is no easy way to remove both of them. Mm -mm. Yeah. Although he's is considering the angle, but he should realize that that yellow stone is probably is, in the way. Yep, uh, he's looking at it right now, I think. And I don't, so I mean, <laughs> unless he's planning on using the yellow stone as his, as his missile, that seems weird. Or does he think, he, does he think he can get in there? He might no. actually, taking a look on the overhead, he could get in there. He doesn't have any margin for error. But what's but, wrong with just drawing to the button? Um, he missed it on his last shot. Do it again. Well, and that appears Give a little to bit be, more ice. and it appears that common sense has broken out. Very good. And that's what he's doing. Um, you got to have good back end communication. Yep. The, the, let the vice and skip figure it out. Take an extra second. Make the right call, exactly. which is exactly what they did here. Yep. So the uh, vice Tyler Holloway, who's wearing a South Shore curling club from my hometown of Bridgewater, Massachusetts, is setting the broom up for Daniel McGurk to deliver his final stone of the end. It is not the hammer, because he's up 2 nothing. Speaking of being up 2 nothing, Broomies uh, followed their steal of one in the first end with a steal of one in the second end to go up 2 nothing over second breakfast. What about second breakfast? What about second breakfast? You know, I am in favor of second breakfast. I am, I am too. Yeah, you get up early, have a second breakfast. Uh, this was Same not, thing. This it looks tight again. Not put on line. The sweepers are trying to save it, but we're already across the center line. This stone is going to end up out in the outer, out, in the, out in the edge 12, unless it bounces off something and does something creative. Uh, you know, it is on a good line, the to line take out that second stone. It sure is. It was probably not going to roll. To wow, the shot. that was it. I take that back. It Alan, the sweepers shot. made that one. Yes, the that sweepers shot, made that shot. That shot was. A front end accomplishment. Yeah. Um, you know, kudos to the skip for seeing yeah. that it was a possibility. Um, I'm not, uh, or kudos to the vice. Vice, rather. For yeah, it's a good read. I assume. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't hear a really loud "Oh my God!" Plan B yell. 
or anything like that. So I'm assuming that it was the vice who saw it and said, all right, stay on it, keep it straight. I mean, that they thing actually was... took shot out of it, yeah. and um, it's that... not easily extricable <laughs> for Paul to get his two. He's going to have to do something gentle. He's going to have to do gentle not, and thick. That is not a gentle line. Well, I think if he hits it, if he hits it normal or control, maybe like three quarters of is it. Is he relying on yellow, red, GM, yellow, red stick around? I yellow don't know. I don't think so. He's got that whole second half of the four foot to work with. Well, yeah, but I'm right. looking at where Jamie Belafonte's groove is. It didn't and run straight. His, I mean, the draw ran pretty straight. So well, I think they can hold it. Sure, but they're gonna they're not gonna be able to hold it at any sort of gentle weight. It's gonna have to be at least. I think it's forward. Yeah, I think maybe he's going to throw water control. Maybe even a solid control. And his concern at that point has to be, will, the, will his shooter stick in the forefoot at that weight with anything that's going to remove that yellow stone? He's got to hit it just he's right. Hit about this is a very precise shot. 85% of either side of the stone. Okay. Jamie's asking for a little bit of card. He's not thrilled with the line. I don't think he's got enough. He's got enough to a little get the too tick thin. out. Got the one. All right. Good try. A little too thin. but Got the one. <laughs> Avoided the steal. Yep. Not a, not their preferred outcome, but within the within the realm of acceptable. Six ends to play. Two to one. Stroop waffle over omelet. I'll let you hit the one. Uh, okay. We have... We do not yet have the second end done on sheet A. Looks like we got two rocks to go. Yes, the red skip from um, I think the they're Waffle from House. Yeah, that's the, the Waffle House skip is trying to figure out which syrup he wants on his draw to the draw to the forefoot. I think the question is, he's trying to decide which of those two yellow stones that's in the forefoot does he want to freeze on. And the answer is raspberry. I mean. Disagree, but okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big maple guy. That's fine. Yeah. 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 I also accept a strawberry. And good morning, Bo. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the chat. How many viewers we got right now, Dylan? We, Thirty-three. Thirty-three. We are. Holy smokes! And down to <laughs> and down to twenty-six. Oh man! <laughs> what did I do? What did I do? Uh, Bo showed up, six people left. Ah. I don't know what that um, Nuts. had to say with anything. All right. So but we still thank you all for over watching. Over on sheet A, that redstone is not going to get all the way to the freeze. So this is going to leave yellow Steam open. And waffle, Steam and Waffle could very easily tie the game. With um, a, they just need eight foot, and it'll get three. Yeah. So, or are they considering, they're considering... No, don't do raise. that. That is a horrible choice. <laughs> you got to draw for three, my friend. If you're going to do anything, do it that way. Yes, <laughs> but I wouldn't even recommend doing that. <laughs> so they're looking at what they're looking at. You can we have the, we have the four overhead view on, so you we can see the, you can see the skip and the voice making the uh, skip and vice rather trying trying to consider. We've got a shot for. I mean, it's a shot for six, so I can understand taking the minute on it. But it's also a jam for against one. <laughs> well, it's not going to jam if they go the way they're thinking about going. Now, the original thing that they were talking about, which was outside in, yes, that was jams were very much in order. <laughs> um, they're going for it. They're going for it. All right. Well, while he's figuring that out, we're going to look at rock number three on our feature sheet here. Um, Sean Hutzko, he curls out of the Detroit Curling Club, and he is a... Uh, Probably throwing some sort of center guard. All right, so the over on sheet. Yeah, this is going to be an exciting shot on over A, so on sheet a, yeah. stay tuned. I will. I'm going to go over and take a gander at that. How much, how much headset do I have? Do I have enough to get there? Um, you do not have a lot. All right. It's kind of tangled up. Got oh, you got enough. enough. You got right. enough to get here. All right, so uh, field level reporting now. Um, <laughs> the skip. Okay, so the front end appears to be trying to talk sense into their skip right now, frankly. Um, this looks like an intervention, and it looks like a successful intervention as the vice moves their. Uh, it appears to be a successful intervention as the vice moved their um, broom, so it is just it, they're just playing the smart draw for three to tie the game. I like it. Good move. Good that move. Was, that was the, the front end. Steaming waffle. 
the front end stepped in and said, you know what, second end, we're down three, we have a shot for three to tie the game. That's a really good idea, Skip. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, on our feature sheet, Stroop Waffle is uh, just barely misses a beautiful draw behind that corner guard. They're going to sit top 12. I'm let you hit and roll, sit one in the top four with some uh, with some uh, coverage. And the draw was a Did little heavy, but not so heavy as to be a problem. He hey. tapped one of his other stones, there scored you go. his three. It's a brand new ball game. They're only curling six ends today. Trading field goals, but exactly. yeah, they're only playing six ends today. <laughs> Actually, the time that they're on, they may only be playing seven, because um, it's already 9.41. They're already 41 minutes into the clock. The likelihood of them finishing the seven ends, therefore getting to start the eight in two yeah. hours, is a little shaky. So back to the feature sheet. Here is Kevin Ames with his draw. A draw behind cover back in the back eight foot. I'm pretty sure he wanted to be higher, yeah. but, yeah, but he's, he's still sitting two, got some center coverage. Great. Exactly. So Paul doesn't, it's maybe not exactly what he wanted, but I think he's okay with that. I think uh, that's a, a commonly used phrase in curling. I don't hate it. Exactly. And we're back up to 35. Thank you again, everybody, for tuning in to our YouTube channel, uh, Potomac Curling Club. This is the Brunch Spiel, a USWCA event. Winner goes to the US 5 and Under Nationals, unless your team, Benjo Delormente, then the A event runner-up goes to the 5 and Up, 5 and Under uh, Nationals in exotic Hibbing, Minnesota, in the heart of the Iron Range. Yes, Dan, man. I am. A re I am. I was actually born in Stoughton, but I lived in Bridgewater as a kid. Most of my extended family is still up there. My parents moved away a long. We moved away in the '70s. Yes, I'm that old. Um, but yes, I am. I am originally from that neck of the woods. Welcome to the chat. Thank you for being along. And yes, I agree with you, Bo. IHOP does have more pancake flavors. Uh, my, my, not more pancake. More syrup flavors. I think Waffle House really has, you can have maple and like it. <laughs> um, and we're not sure maple is the correct term. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yellow taps the uh, second red shot back and sits in a position where it is third, or is second, making red third. Um, it is extremely exposed. Paul could just take that on and be lying his three, but he's not. He's drawing the house. I guess he's going to assume that... Um, going to assume that that tap on that if he needs it later will be there. He's probably right, yeah. frankly. And the pro side is missing high. Yeah. Line's fine. Yeah. Although this is looks kind of wide. There is. Yeah, yesterday this it appeared. That, wide. Yeah, well, and especially if you get too wide on this sheet, uh -huh. there's kind of a ridge where it doesn't come back as yeah. extreme as the closer, it does closer to the center line. Yeah, noticed. that barely moved up. That didn't move a lick. No, it is second it's shot. Second shot. Um, I think a little bit of a jam. Jam, jams on jams but in they order. got a hit and roll too. Yes. Oh well. There's a lot of that's not that's not a great placement. But it's not it appears that Daniel is not taking it on. It appears Daniel's just playing four foot, four foot. Who can find the four foot? Why me? Um I'm not sure I'm thrilled with it. Well I think he's actually I think he's actually I don't know. He said is he playing a little like light hit? Like a, no, he's not. Look at the hand. He's, he's playing the draw. Yeah, I saw. I saw him kind of brush the back of the forefoot. Like yeah. I would like. I would like the stone in the back of the forefoot. Uh -huh. um, he just moved his broom as though he thinks this shooter was a little tight. I disagree. Or is that now where he expects the stone to go? I don't. Can't read his body language yet. <laughs> the sweepers are on, on it. it. It's gonna be hefty. It's gonna be behind the tee. Is it gonna go all the way going. through, or is it gonna wreck on the red in the back? It is gonna, it's gonna wreck on the nuzzle red on the red of the back. Nuzzle, not really a wreck. Yeah. yeah. So red still lies. Red lies two. Which that's I'm let you hit and roll. Looking to look at me. Looking to get a steal. Steal would be yeah. great for them. They would find it. Things are looking. Uh, they're starting to shape up okay for that steal. Bit. As long as they can clog up the center with a nicely thrown rock by Jamie, they'll. Uh, which appears to be the shot that Paul was calling for. Yep. Um, I'm a little concerned he may, he might have called the line that's so wide, wide he's out there past the ridge. Yeah. But on the other hand, he doesn't actually want to get all the way back to the center line either. He kind of wants he wants the stone to be about a eh, foot, foot and a half off the center line. Now this one's moving left. a bit. This one's actually moving appropriately. So apparently he got across the ridge. Good. It's coming across, and it's damn near precisely where Paul asked for. Maybe wow. a little Another too, but beautiful not shot deep by enough Jamie. to be a problem. 
Uh, it is not third shot. It is fifth shot right now, in my opinion. But it's in a it's position. Effective. It's in a position where just the tiniest tap yeah. would make it third shot. It appears that uh, Daniel is calling the tap up on his yellow. I feel like that's riskier than necessary at this stage. I agree. I don't I, mind just I taking go, something away. I would go after C. I would. I would. I would. I would create a minus situation. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Red, red has three, three minus two is one. Consider that something like that. I mean, hey, if he makes it, it's a, you know, if he good makes, for him. Well, but it, not a lot of. Except really where he's looking at putting it, really that just gives wow. Paul a valid counter raise. That's a good point. And nothing has been accomplished. Yeah. So this is not a, this is a five and under strategic decision. <laughs> five and unders tend to look for what do I got to do to get shot right now. Right, right. Um, which is justifiable. Which is I mean, justifiable. You don't see the more you skip, the more rocks you'll yep, see, yep, the yep. less you'll play. I am not right. saying they're a bad person, although yeah. I am saying this is not a great shot because it's going to raise that stone over. The weight would have been about right, yeah. but it popped it out at an angle, and that stone, it's still in the house, but it's pretty much going to be doomed to irrelevancy for the rest of this end. Now watch something jam on it for five or something <laughs> to prove me wrong. Um, Paul is... I think he's just going to close the get. Yeah, he and he, yeah. and I agree with the decision agree. to change the broom handle. Yeah. Um, he just threw it. Yeah, originally he was going to curl right to left to try to cover the gap to the right of the center line. I feel like that's a that's not the best line whereas this line which as you just said Jamie just threw should be should be correct and also if he, if Jamie's too strong he can come in and put a fourth put in a fourth, one, fourth in there, one in there yeah. which there is a they're power not in scoring it. four. And they're not yeah, Now they those. are. Um, Mine's great. Mine's really good. This is, as I was saying, it's a little deep. It is. Did he get to a hard freeze? He did not. Ugh. Yeah, there's a double there now. Although, this is too much room for it. I feel like at any sort of hit weight, this stone is not going to come across enough. I think it's yeah, it could to take them both. Take I, them both I, I think I think this is a jam. I think this is a jam line, not a not a not a double line. Um, and I think he pushed it on the release. He's not even crossing the center line yet. He's going to chip the there top red. There it goes. Well, it's going now. Let's see. Yeah, which just enough go to through? go through the hole. Oh, oh no, he chipped. Okay, <laughs> he got both stones moving. So good job. I mean, technically he did move the double, but right, now we're still sitting three. Still sitting three. Spaced out. Yeah. Paul is saying, you know what? T close that hole. Close that up. Just Absolutely. Close that hole. And uh, he's, he's considering, I don't know why he's considering an in off there. That's not where, uh, maybe he's just looking at Alan, it. Alan, we are so engrossed in these two games, we got some scoring updates on we sheet C do. and D. And D. Yeah. Um, over on C, Team Skeba, Skeba, Skeb, Skebby. There we go. Skebby. Um, got a one. They're trading ones back and forth um, to go up two to one. And over on D. Um, what about second breakfast? Second Finally bre got their deuce. What about second breakfast? Got their deuce. They're actually tied at a two. It's not two to one, which we have on the screen. It's two to two. So we got a tie game on one. We got a tie game on A. Tie, we got game, a tie game on A. Tie, tie game, game on, on D. D. Two to one on C. Currently two to one on B. Oh, yeah. holy smokes. This is we wonderful. Could, we could have some blowouts, but we're not choosing to. Doesn't look like it today. No. Keep it up, guys. Keep them tight. This is exciting. Got to get the early. viewers. Why we've got that 36 levers going. That's right. No, we do. Yeah, no, Bo, it is Joe. I'm still Alan. Hello. I'm still Joe. It is. And there comes Paul with his first rock in end number three. And it looks like it was worth getting up early this morning because this is a good, strong, competitive curling. Yes, sir. All right, Paul Luthi's first stone. They do not have the hammer here in this end, but they do have one, two, three, four scoring stones. Well, one, two, three scoring stones and a fourth that is probably not scoring but could be made to do so quite easily. Paul is trying to block the annoying line. I'm fine that with that. Blocks the annoying, that That's a good shot. The annoying line. That's a very good shot. So You're always happy when you're a skip and you're throwing a guard, especially when you're the skip without the hammer. Yeah. Well, if you're the skip with the hammer and you're throwing a guard, that's okay too. It's a little weird. It's a little weird. But <laughs> hopefully, at that point, it's because it's the eighth end and you're yeah. up two or yes. something like that. Um, I don't know. You're I don't defending have that six. Yeah, you don't need to throw yeah, exactly. seventh one. 
That's a great guard there by Paul. Yeah, it was, yeah. and Stroopwafel is now starting to consider uh, low probability shots. Like right now, they're looking at an in-off, which I don't see a draw line to the button at the moment, so that is kind of no. what they got. Um, so what they what they didn't realize early when we were talking four or five shots ago at this yeah. point, when we were talking about sometimes you just got to clean it up yep. rather than go for the button, Yeah, they didn't do that. No. And this is what happens as a result. So if watch you're, and learn, people. If you're watching from home and you're a you're a skip or want to be skip, this is why the professional teams don't have 16 stones in play <laughs> ends because stuff like this can happen. <laughs> but it looks fun from our from oh, yeah, here yeah, in the warm yeah. room as with the, the mics in, on. As the person in the warm room responsible for making entertaining curling Let's see it uh, all content, day. This is great. Yeah. But Stroopwafel is sitting here going. Um, expletive, expletive, what do I do now? <laughs> and I'm going to bet he's not using the word expletive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, so Dylan just pointed out that for some reason there's a yellow stone a foot out of play in the back. You can't see it on the overhead camera, but you can see it on the wide long shot that we've got on the screen. Um, that they've left sitting there, and that could conceivably cause a problem if a, if some raised stones hit that, and it's certainly a problem if somebody trips over it. So I feel like they want to remove that, but oh well. All right, so they went for the draw. They're going to that go topping. Oh, chipped no. off his. No, and no. Yep. Oh, that was so close. That is what we in the business refer to as a disaster. Yeah. Um, you're right that it was very close. It was within. It was within a millimeter. Well, I want to. I don't want to say it's a quite a disaster because he did open things up, maybe for some sort of hit and roll or a draw for his last shot. If Potomac can't put up a well placed guard. Well, actually, what Potomac could do. And still is, three. What Potomac could do, which is even worse, is. If Potomac oh. were to come in at, at top eight, top eight. and just nuzzle that red that's on the center line, yeah. currently being six stone, yeah. and do a split roll, now yeah. Potomac's playing against five, yeah. and the shooter probably rolls to a place to be the guard that you're looking for uh, yeah. as one of those fives, and um, Daniel McGurk finds himself in a world of hurt because nobody wants to draw against five. Nobody. Nobody. There's not a single person. What about Dylan? Man. Dylan, you want to draw against five? I don't no, shaking no. His head. good answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to wise just put up a. I think this is a good call. Just put up a guard, take away the only chance they have for salvaging this end. Right. Would be but that if hit by roll some, or draw. If by some chance yeah. the line's a little inside and a little heavy, they, yeah. Because I saw Paul and I saw Paul and Jamie looking at that. You know, we could if we had to. Okay, the front end appears to be discussing the wisdom of coming the other way. I don't think there is any wisdom there. I agree. So this is not a successful intervention. Um, actually, it is a successful intervention in that they did not they didn't do it. <laughs> right. Um, All right, so here comes Paul Luthi with his second rock. A delivery straight out of Portage La Prairie from 1968. And observe. And off we go. That is, that is very wide in that, that ridge that we were surmising might be in play might be a thing He's it's coming wide to catch it but it is coming it's no, coming they, they 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 came off of it and here it comes it's rolling downhill i think it might actually over curl slightly it, if it didn't work horrible. it made it harder yeah. right so and i think the, that's a fine shot the draw line is still there and it just needs to be a draw to the forefoot uh, well, actually, okay, so they're looking at a, and uh, the hit's not there. The, the, it's guarding the hit. How is that guarding the hit? Oh, it's because our camera's got a weird angle. Okay, that stone's actually wider wider in reality than it looks on that yeah. shot. Yeah. Um, so what you guys, well, yeah, what you guys see from the long end, the redstone that was just delivered is protecting what is the second shot stone. As you can see, right now, red is lying a solid three. three. There's a is it possibility four? of a measurement. For now that I'm looking at them, I don't I think don't so. Know. I feel like the stone that's in the back eight, yeah. over to the right of the T line, up, You're thinking up center that's line, third? is is, th is fourth shot. Gotcha. They're definitely lying three. 
Now, the danger of this draw is if they accidentally overcurl, they could tap that stone that we're talking about might be fourth into a position where it could be fourth. They only got to tap it about an inch. That is a risk, although the, the, red, the red guard is probably blocking that line, so it probably doesn't happen. If it's going to overcurl like that, it's probably going to wreck on the guard. They're looking to execute, they're actually looking like they're trying to execute kind of in off off of their, their one that's in the 12 foot. They've got the hit part, they do not get the roll part. There is one, two, three red, virtually certain. They're taking the look to confirm, but I'd be very surprised if it wasn't. They're kicking stones. Kicking stones. They haven't moved those they haven't yellows. Moved those two. Okay. Yeah, okay, there it goes. I think it's three. I'm 90% yeah. sure it's yeah. three yeah. red. So I'm let you hit and roll comes up four to two. Well played, Rend, by the home team. And that actually gives him the uh, largest lead in any of our <laughs> current games. Actually, the only lead in any of our current games. No, that's not true. It's two to one it's over on C. It's two to one over on C, yeah. Um, however, our game on A is tied at three after two. Our game on D is tied at two after three. That's nicely reflected. It's a beautiful set of bookends. I know, right? Yeah. Happy boarding, Bo. Bo is apparently leaving us to go to a board meeting. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know what Saturday board, board meeting. Saturday, yeah. Yeah, Saturday 10 a.m. Yeah. board meeting. Glow. Cool. What kind of massive history are you, Bo? Um, all right. So our feature game is in the fourth end, just releasing the first stone of it. Paul asked for it to come into the house. It and came did. into the house. And that's what we want. You could ask for more, but I wouldn't. Eh, this is Jimmy Daniels going to call your run-of-the-mill corner guard. We like it. We like it. Is I'm going to speak on behalf it, of both. Is it or is it a hit? He called a corner guard. Okay. So yeah. It's just a coincidental broom. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't mind it. This is this is surprisingly a opening out of even the professional playbook. This is happening a lot more these days. Mm -hmm. The team without the hammer, if they're in the lead, they don't play the center guard, corner guard game that we all got taught in curling yeah. 101 skip school. Yeah. Um, and that's probably why they're not playing it, because it's what everybody was taught in curling <laughs> 101 skip school. But they've instead chosen to do that. We're going to bring the first one in, mm -hmm. and if the other team chooses to play a corner guard, we guard up. Now we've got a guarded stone in the forefoot. And all the, if the other team chooses to play the hit, then the team with hammer has foregone a guard, thereby opening the house up, keeping the numbers smaller. It's 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 game theory. It's 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 a mm -hmm. correct thing to do. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, Stroopwaffle actually had the worst possible response, which was not only did they not hit, they didn't even try but they it, split them up. But they did. They, but they put a guard in the house. So it's not actually a guard. They put a scoring stone. <laughs> in the it I wanted know, to we be know a what guard. you meant. It wanted to be a guard, but it wasn't. So now Paul can hit that if he gets the nose. He has it's a, a two, perfect which is precisely hit. Precisely what he did. Couldn't have drawn enough anybody. It's now they got a split house. Theory. Yes. The forefoot is blanketed on both sides. It is theoretically doubleable. In my mind, it's a thin double. Nah. Just go after one, I think. I think if, you, if, you th like if you're thinking double, you're kicking a field goal right there. No doubt in my mind. From the overhead that I saw, it's there if you get the right gearing, but you, your, your margin of error on the shot, you got a, you got a centimeter to hit. Exactly, which is why it's I not say. A great, it's not a great third, not a great ask your five and under second to nah. throw shot. Nah. If you're a five and under skip, eh, you maybe <laughs> consider it. Even then, it's not a great call. Yeah. So the rock's away for it. That would Tim. be Timothy. Yep. <laughs> Tim, Tim, him of the indeterminate last name. <laughs> Actually, we decided his name was Bob, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Um, so that was. This is falling off that was the countertop here. I thought that was intended to be a hit to deal with. Instead, mm. he's guarding up. What I is think that is. I don't. I think he just missed the line. And then also, that, that rock also really took off. I feel end. like he missed the line, missed the weight, and the rock picked a little. That's, that's, that's an over. Um, I think I don't. I've been to stat school. I don't feel like that. <laughs> I, I don't feel like that one gets any points. <laughs> All right. So Paul asking to guard the other stone, although that's a little heavy for that purpose. Maybe he actually said bring it. Bring, I think, bring I me think a he wanted like a, like a like a four, and I think okay. it looks hotter than that. It does look hotter than that. Is it going to curl enough to get behind? Well, it's got a lot on yellow? it. Yellow. Is it going to stay in the house? Is actually a question that I have in my mind. 
Okay, team sweep, both skips saying we want this stone deeper. It's unusual that both skips are like, you know what, I want it deeper. No, I want it deeper. No, I want it deeper. <laughs> I think Paul might have just been cold because he was earlier in this coming That's down. He was possible. like, yeah, it's pretty chilly in here. Hey, you remember how earlier we were complaining about not having any complicated houses? Yeah. I would like to invite you to take a gander at sheet A, which just apparently finished their third end. Um, all that for one point. All that for one red, yeah. Um, so that actually gives Waffle House a 4-3 lead over Steam and Waffle. And the trend After continues of tight games. Yes. And C and D are still working their way through their fourth end. Balisser. Balisser. That's it. I believe him. Yes. Uh, Very good. No. Actually, Julie Basilier. Thanks is saying, ha, 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 if it helps, you said it right when you said bas a -lier, I'm his wife. bas okay. we are. That is our final That's answer. It. That's the answer. Locked in. Tim, Tim bas -lier. Timothy bas -lier. We're locking in our answer. Yes. We are not phoning any more friends. <laughs> if we have any left at this point. All right, Paul going after the stone that was just thrown in the forefoot. He's got the hit card. He's going to lose the shooter. Okay. I don't think he minded that. Nah, nah, just get rid of it. it was really plan one. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have hammer, and he now has a two-point lead. So play into, the, play into the force is, I mean, it's what the book says you do. And it's a good we got play. a hammer draw on sheet C. And it is, it is a peach. Be good enough for so a draw three. for three. Good enough for three on C. Very for nice yellow, shot there. Making that four to two. Team O'Reilly up over Team Skeppy. Group Waffles, next stone is on its way. That is the second second stone. Yes? Yes. He's gonna tick the current shot stone and, or is he? He's gonna get it. Just a little Just nudge. a little, not Sit enough. Sit on the to, button. He sits, I mean, on the button, literally, literally on the button. Literally, about 95% covered there. Yeah. Um, it is removable, and it looks like that's what Paul's got in mind. Coming this way, the only risk is an overcurl. An overcurl hit would jam, or a wide delivery could wreck on that top guard, which is providing the coverage for Paul's stone screen, too. I am concerned that this that I, the wreck that I was just talking about might be a thing. Is it sneaking past? Snuck past. Oh, with like an inch and a half to spare. Never mind. Oh, he does tick his bed. Stays around. Ooh. That's fine. Yeah, that's really nice. That actually, yeah, that puts those two reds in a line behind the guard. So that's that's a strong house for yeah. Paul Luffy from Omelette. You hit and roll right now. Um, Stroop Waffle can still solve this problem. It's 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 only a three stone problem. That's not a it's not an insolvable problem by any stretch of the imagination. But he needs to make a shot or two here, and he's got to start to be thinking about I got to make sure that I might make sure that I take my one. Twos are kind of starting. To, two is kind of starting to be off the board for a team Stroop Waffle, barring a mistake by this. And I think after this rock is thrown, we're going to have a hammer on sheet. D. Is it hammer time? It is hammer time. It's hammer, uh, let's see, red is sitting one, possibly two with hammer. Ooh, okay. what a double. So, uh, we're not playing box today, otherwise it'd be getting one. Yeah, um, that's beaut. That's a well-played double. So, remember how I was saying you had to untangle the knot? He sure did. That untangles the knot. Yeah, that's uh, Jonathan Hickey there with that beautiful double. All right, so we're going to the all-cam view as Broomies and Second Breakfast are considering the hammer throw, which will be delivered by Brumies. Currently, they have a stone on the button. Am I wrong? Is this not Brumies? Why does it seem like they're looking at a hit? I think they're looking to take that yellow one off the top to put the two in the back 12 to count. But there's jam okay. cities all over that place. That is, yeah, that seems... Dicey. That seems risky. I mean, I understand, but so just call box. At, so yesterday during the first <laughs> during the first draw games, they were all they all played the box game. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Got it. What was the prize? Uh, whatever Christine could stuff into a Cheerios box. Um, it was well. That could be a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. It was primarily um, stuff like hot cocoa and tea. Oh, nice. And little little tchotchkes like that. Lovely, lovely. Some candies, like some pop tarts, you know, that kind of thing. Nothing. 
sticking stuck well to the theme, frankly. Very good. I, I got to give Christine and Michael have they've they've themed this up very well. All right, here we go. Fauna Rock here right, on sheet D. It is on its way. It's coming in, like you said. We're trying to do the and, and we were just talking about. And this is why that was not a great idea. That is going to be a, a certain one probable draw for two into a one, one for Virginia and Triangle. Yes. Second breakfast benefits from the error. What about yep, second three to two. breakfast? What about second breakfast? Why are they spending all this time looking at this? Are they considering did yellow get a second? Uh, I don't There's think so. There's no conceivable so. way yellow's going to second on that. Yeah. 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 Anywho, back to the action on sheet D, uh, B. B. We're on sheet B, that's right. Yes. I know my alphabet. Sure you do. <laughs> Stone from Stroopwafel is on the way. They are currently lying shot after that well-executed double on their last stone. I was wrong about the double. That was uh, Tyler Holloway who made that double, not John Hickey. My apologies. And, and he's going to make a beautiful draw, that too. That is a beautiful draw to a freeze. Man, on what a pair. Okay, it's not a perfect freeze on the stone on the red in the back, but it's good enough. It's quite it's good. good enough for 99% yeah. of situations. Great um, pair there. They could, you know... It's, there's enough separation that it's slashable if you're willing to accept the loss of your redstone as well. Um, but Paul's not really willing to accept that loss of that redstone at the moment because it's all he has in the house. So, and there's only one guard up top. That's not true. There's a second guard. Someone was standing in front of it. I missed it. Paul is planning on drawing around his guard mm -hmm. that is just to the right of the center line. Makes sense to me. He basically wants to find, he essentially wants to find the button. Yeah. He could be shot out of this, and if he was, it would be adequately covered. Oh, yeah, definitely. Be, yeah. It would be, it would be it very would be well covered. covered, yeah. So... I don't mean, I don't think he's I don't think he minds if he ends up in the full four foot behind the cover, not quite being shot. Yeah, you know, cut down to a force of one. Yeah, shrink it a little bit. Yeah. At least cut that one yeah. of the back eight that uh that yeah. Tyler just threw. Yeah, right now the scoring area is entirely too large for Team Stroop Waffle. So Paul and Paul is changing his mind. Okay. I guess he got down on the hack and maybe we can see more of it than we think. Does he think he think. can shoot that hole? He sure does. You don't need to take that shot on right now, Paul. Well, but the, the, the plus side of it is even if he doesn't get it and he peels one or the other of those guards, he's peeled a guard. Peeling a guard is almost never a sin. And if he can, if he does make the shot, if he shoots the gap, I mean, the gap's there. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to come up weight. It's going to have, it doesn't have to be a perfect laser, but it has to be pretty straight. Yeah, I guess not a bad idea trying to take some rocks out because if he, if he misses that guard, then I guess they're drawn for another, uh, thrown at a third one, and then he's chasing quite a bit, and there could be a pile of points for Broomstone. Uh, and the interesting question that I have is, if he gets comes across to make the contact on the yellow, he's that jam on the pile of two. Ooh, the it's got to move. It's got to move. So they are trying to push it. It's starting to move. Is it going to get there? Taking a sweet time. time. I think he's peeling I think that he's guard. Peeling the top red. Yep. Yeah, very much so. Like I said, a peel is not a peel is not the end of the world. He's got one more stone, so that basically frees up. I mean, right now the right to left draw line is wide open, so. Stroopwafel is going to try to draw, and then Paul is just going to say, okay, I will take a better, I will do a better draw. So, Alan, looks like they're looking to throw in one to the center of the house, top eight. What would you, would you be opposed to just drawing to, like, the eight foot on our right side? Second or third shot and forcing hits, hits? Give yourself maybe, maybe if, like, Paul, if he throws to, like, I don't know, mid eight foot for the draw, Paul maybe has to go after something. He could go after that other one. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Paul's. I'm pretty it's sure hard Paul. To get. Pretty sure Paul's going. If, if he if he puts this in the top eight, where it, yeah, I agree with you. That that seems like that's what he's brooming for. Yeah. Um, is brooming for the yeah whatever. Um, then yeah, Paul probably has to play a hit exchange game, mm -hmm. unless it's pretty wide. If it's wide enough that it's not on the draw line, Paul could be choose to be choose to gamble a little, and. Play draw, counter draw. Well, here's, this is Daniel McGurk, his first rock in, and number four. Yeah, 
he had he, had his, he, he hasn't curled badly. His strategy last end wasn't so great and it put him in the situation. This is over curling something. Yeah, fierce. it's really falling. Is he actually going to get past that guard? He's going to go behind that guard for sure. Okay. My angle looked like he might have actually popped into it. He didn't. Uh, okay. So this is a well protected third stone. It's actually second shot. And it nudged the other guy into just a little bit closer to the button. Corner freeze. Yep. But yep. So Paul is Paul is trying to execute the corner freeze. If he executes it, it's it's a it's completely a different great, end. It's a great shot. Uh, from where he put the broom, I don't think the corner freeze that he's playing is going to be is going to be shot. I think it's just going to be a cut down to one and limit. No harm. Right. No It'll be a cut down to one and yeah. limit the hammer draw draw attempt to two to a literally you've got to put the stone on the button, which is doable, but yeah. it is not being even even the Schusters and um, the deans of the world don't hit the button every time. All right, now the risk here is if Paul if Paul misses this shot. And it's an open draw. It's an open draw for, for four, four, an open hit, depending on how the miss is. And the sweepers are on this crazy hard. Yeah, it's I don't think this has the legs. You gotta drag it. I it's still I'm amazed it's still going, to be quite honest. I with don't you. feel like this has the legs to be anything other than a three guard, maybe maybe just touching the top of the house, but that's not enough to make a difference. Uh, that's all right. a problem. That's unfortunate. For so, if you are if, if it is unfortunate if you are rooting for Potomac. It was, it was, <laughs> it was on the correct line. Yes. I will say this: if that, if Paul had thrown that three and a half feet further, yep, it would have been perfect. a perfect shot. Yeah. He could have thrown it six feet short, six feet third, further, and his front end would be not guzzling down water like, right. was, like uh, at the moment. But Paul has given uh, Stroopwafel a clean. I mean, there's not even anything in the way of the draw. Mm -hmm. All they need to do is touch, touch eight, eight foot. Yeah, uh, for four, which, you know, I mean, you got to come back from giving up a three. Taking a four is a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Daniel McGurk with the skipped rocks in end number four. Again, you are watching the brunch spiel, a five and under open event at Potomac Curling Club, National Capital Curling Center, and USWCA sponsored winning team goes to the five and under national. It feels like it's got a little steam. The sweepers just got off of it. Handle kind of fell apart too. Jamie's sitting there as though he's hoping to get it far enough to not score. It's gonna and be close. It's gonna be close. He, he did just not did not off. So there. close. He's just, just light enough. It's a good thing for the sweepers that they got off. That is a draw of four. Alan, this is gonna be my fourth end break. I'm gonna go okay. grab a glass of champagne and I'll be back. Happy fourth end break. Oh, let's uh, mute my mic here so we don't. That is a great plan. Go ahead. Uh, give me some more juice. Just straight orange juice. All right, so that's leaving me on my own. I've been abandoned. Ah, it's okay. Um, so where are we at? We've got the two scores on C and D. O'Reilly's up four to two in the fifth end. Second breakfast is up three to two in the fifth end. Over here on sheet A, it's four three in favor of Waffle House. They're still in the fourth end. They still have three ends and three stones to play in that end. And we're just getting ready to push the first stone of N five out here in our feature game. Um, let you hit and roll from Potomac, throw in the yellows, throw in the reds, I'm sorry, against um, Stroopwafel from the Broomstones Country Club, Broomstones Curling Club. Um, they are throwing the yellow stones. They just scored a four to go up six to four, and therefore are throwing first to this event. Stone is on its way. He's asking for center guard. He's he's playing the the book, which is don't have hammer, throw center guard. It's kind of a high guard. It's not. It's, it's a it's a one and a half, maybe a maybe a high two guard. That's 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 a standard opening play. And it appears that Paul is following it up with a corner guard, also a standard play. So it appears we will have a standard end, at least at the beginning. Alright, yellow on sheet A, 
through their first skip stone and used it to do a tap up. They're lying one over there. They've still got a couple stones to go this end. We'll update you on that when we get there. Thank you, sir. Uh, Paul's attempt at a corner guard went a little long. Oh, it wasn't Paul's attempt. Paul's request of Sean to throw a corner <coughs> guard went a little long. It's over in the edge of the 12 foot. Um, Probably not, probably feeling very lonely at the moment, but may well factor into this later. And the champagne pours are generous. Hooray! Hooray! We here at Potomac may have our faults, but never let it be said we do not provide an adequate supply of alcohol for the money. Uh, we got it. What do we got going on C here? We got a hammer on C. It looks like. Uh, nope, we do not. No, There's still red rock. I just the, uh, the next hand. The next hammer that. coming up will be yellow hammer on A My apologies. in the fourth end, but red still getting ready to throw their last. All right. Um, they're spending an awful long time right now figuring out what to do out there, and I understand why. Red, yellow is currently lying one. Red is getting ready to throw their final stone, and they, they do not have a neat, a neat line in. No, there's a lot of rocks out there. <laughs> a lot of stuff to navigate. I think they were also wondering for sure, is yellow shot? I'm looking at a kind of an oblique angle. I really am not. It's hard to tell. Sir. Yeah, it's pretty hard to tell. All righty, so Paul was asking for a draw around the center guard. He didn't get it. He got a peel, or not peel, a, uh, a tick. tick of the center guard. <laughs> may not have been a deliberate tick, or it may have been. <laughs> knowing Paul, it may have been That's a true. deliberate tick. I'm glad we did not implement the no tick rule for the five and under. Um, <laughs> be although kind of ridiculous, wouldn't it? <laughs> bad news. What? Whatever team goes to nationals. Has to play by the no tick yes, rule? Yes, they do. Are they really putting that in for they, a five and under? They put it in for arena nationals. What? The ruling was oh, made. My word. The ruling was made by the competition committee that we're doing it at all national championships wow. other than wheelchair. Wow. Um, all right. Well. I don't think they considered arena nationals at five and under when they made that ruling. Sure. But after they made that ruling, they decided to stick with it. Trust me, there was an official speeding. I, I, I believe it. I believe it. Um, as one of the chief umpires for the arena nationals yeah. back, there was. There was entertainment. Um, <laughs> That's a very political way to put it. Well done. I actually think they may have had done it in Arena Nationals as a way to get the officials used to it. Ah, okay. Fair enough. Um, Are right, they trying to figure out here? That uh, that draw on A was well short. Yeah, uh, trying so to figure that out. Yellow um, is we're getting ready to throw their shot yep. stone, and I think they're trying to figure out, do we have a promote for a second? They really don't. Everything now we got hammer on C. Hammer on C already? They're yeah. all end ahead? They are all yep. end ahead. Wow. Yep. Yeah, okay, we're, we're going overhead right now. So C's hammer is on its way, being thrown by Team Skebby. They're currently lying one. They're trying to draw for a second. The sweepers are on it pretty hard. The line is fine. Does it have the distance? They have to get full. Oh, they're getting there. They're dragging it. It's they're dragging it. They did not, not. get there. A good Came effort, about almost. A foot and half short, one red. Four to three, Team O'Reilly will have the hammer in the sixth and the lead. All right, over. Uh, we're just going to cut in on our feature game for a second as Stroop Waffles Skip is not thrilled with this shot as he shouldn't be Ooh. because it's a clean miss, goes through very That actually hard. got a little bit closer than I thought. They catch it before it hits the hack, thank you. <laughs> um, all right, Hammer is coming in on A. Let's see what's going on over there, if we can pull the overhead on A for a second. So yellow, okay, from the overhead it looks a little bit clearer that yellow is probably lying that one which they need to tie. They're going to try to draw around. They need to get full eight foot. This this stone doesn't have that. This stone does not have no, that. Somebody's called two. Two is, but they're not sweeping. Why are they no, that's just. I agree. If they call two, what? Oh, this doesn't look half bad now. It's certainly uh, not a two. Yeah, I don't. Maybe maybe they, maybe that wasn't from that sheet. They needed to get half into a the eight. Gallant they effort. Did not get there again. Another draw comes up a foot short, and Steam and Waffle, Steam and Waffle ties up Waffle House. We believe. Uh, they're gonna measure. They're gonna measure. They, yeah, they I, I, I read the lips of this uh, the vice skip, and she said, "I want to measure." Okay. 
Okie dokie. All right, Alan, is this where you uh, critique their measurement skills? Uh, it is not, because I critiqued, <laughs> one, because I critiqued one yesterday, yeah. and I got a little bit, don't do that. Okay, fair so, enough. So, all right. I will, if I see anything that's grievous egregious, wrong, I will bite my tongue. Very good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just figured I would ask. Yeah, fair enough. I will say that from my view of the overhead, it looks likely to be yellow, but on the other hand, even at the competitive levels, we tell the teams, if you have any doubt, yeah. take the minute measure. It, I mean, the vice skip for Waffle House seemed to call it pretty quickly. He's like, I think we should measure. So let's find out. All right. They, they measured on the Yellow, for sure. Going to yellow, virtually certain that's yellow. That is, uh, they're, yep. They're yep, very good. Thank you for kicking kick it. In. Very good. So that does, in fact, tie it up at four. Waffle House, Steam and Waffle at the halfway break. Well... Probably not the half no. of the their pace. <laughs> at the end of the fourth end, tied at four. All right, back to the action on sheet B, our feature sheet. Omelet, you hit and roll out of Potomac Curling All Club right. against Stroop Waffle from Broomstone. Yellow is currently lying shot back at the back eight foot with a catcher and a guard. So that's a, I mean, I'm not going to say impregnable stone, but it's... It's a stone that's feeling pretty comfortable with yeah. its lot in life. We are on Vice Stones. Jamie Belafontaine, I believe he's being asked to actually freeze on top of that yellow stone. Based or at on least, what I saw. Yeah, or at least get come around and cover. get one. Yeah. Sweepers are on standby, but not hitting it yet. I feel like I might have pushed it unless I was concerned about length. And wow, look at the brakes come on that one. Ooh. Okay, so okay, he succeeded. Tapped. He's not fully behind the cover, but he is enough behind the cover, frankly, that anything that hits that probably jams on that yellow, yeah. which actually jamming on the yellow is horrible for yellow because that's the only yellow in the house. That was a pretty darn good effort, though, it's, from Jamie. It's just fine. Yeah. Um, Stroopwaffle, no, Stroopwaffle does not have hammer. Uh, I'll let you hit your roll has hammer this end. Right, he just gave up the four. That's right. So... That would be Vice Teller Hallway. Yes, yes. Yes. Delivering what we believe to be his, his second first, rock. His second? Yes, his second rock. There's only okay. two left on the Fair. yellow okay. side. I don't have a good view of that. Thank you. You're welcome. He's trying. He's basically looking to counter draw, just kind of draw to the top to a freeze. On top. Whoa, that stone kicked up that something. Sure fierce. did. Still got but past the guard. And there you and go. Actually, that's <laughs> perfectly. Fine. That's pretty good. That's pretty darn that's, good. That's how we, in the, as what we in the business refer to as problematic. You think it's problematic? I think it's well for for. Oh, um, for omelet you for hit and roll. Omelet you hit and roll. Uh, I, yes. see, I see. I see. I see. Um, for. I was gonna say. I'm like. For <laughs> team Stroopwafel. <it's, laughs> that's really good. The only problem is how do we do that again? <laughs> um, it appears that. Uh, Paul is asking Jamie to draw around. Now that Yellowstone did drift behind the T, so it could be it could be frozen on. Um, although that scored, shrinks the scoring area pretty severely for Paul to get a big number. Doesn't really need a big number. A two is perfectly adequate. So this stone is cutting well, but I don't think it's cutting. Got a lot of, I think lot of it's gas got on it. Got a little it. too much juice. It's gonna sweep up. It's gonna freeze Almost. on the one in the back. Just another very close. Close yes. shot by Jamie. That's kind of been the story of Jamie's game so far. Is he hasn't he hasn't missed any of them. He just hasn't perfectly executed all of them. And that's how this game goes. Hello. <laughs> Everyone's waving to everybody team here. Team Super would like to say hello. I think there's a team behind us that they were waving to, but we thought they were waving to us. So we waved back, and then I found the team. They're behind either them. waving to their fans in, this, in the warm room, or they're, no, or I think they're, they're saying hello to their uh, to the audience. Of they have a gallery us. behind us. They have a gallery. They yes. Got, they got a fan club. Yes. Yay them. Okay. It's the pants. It's got to be the pants. It's always nice to see a pair of a team wearing a pair of matching non-black pants. I love them. I feel I feel attacked. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why, because your team's wearing, wearing matching black pants? Yeah. Actually, yes. Everybody wears black pants. Or mostly everybody wears black pants, and I'm glad the trend is kind of shifting away. They show the lips so you know when you got to roll before the game. Ah. I like the hot dog pants that uh, 
Sean Hutzko out of that is Detroit awesome. is hosting, yeah. is showing, is wearing two. They're pretty nice. Now, I've never seen it, those before. If they make it to nationals, he can't wear those. He can't? No. Well, okay. Well, no, he can't. Yeah, so if there's a rule on pants? If he can talk the entire team into wearing Oh, so you got to wear matching Your uniform pants. has to be uniform. Gotcha. That makes sense. Um, at least in color and appearance. It doesn't actually have to be the same in precise cut. Gotcha. But if you go with black longs, everybody has to wear black longs. Yep. Okay. And your outer layer of the of the upper body wear has to be the same. You can actually have different shirts hmm. if everybody has the same matching jacket. Oh, I see. They frown on it. Sure. But you can. You can. I gotcha. And where it really gets entertaining is hats. Hats. The uh, the Eagles hat that Kevin Ames is wearing right now would yep. not be allowed in national. I see. Because it, is, it has a branded logo. Uh huh. And because of all sorts of sponsorship and trademark and all that kind of junk. Can't that wear that junk. stuff. The only hats you're allowed to wear are either um, totally blank, uh -huh. or you can wear USA. You, you can wear a USA curling cap. Sure. Or all four members can wear all four members. Any of the four members that wear hats. Yeah can wear a matching team team logo hat. I see. Now, is there a rule on a style of hat? Like, can all four wear fezes or sombreros or fedoras? If all four are willing to wear the same hat, <laughs> yes. The, I'm getting some um, laughter here from our camera operator, Dylan. <laughs> That's a valid question, isn't it? <laughs> and actually, technically, all four do not have to wear the same style of hat. Ah. So one can wear a stocking cap yes. and another wear a baseball cap. That's Neat. fine. Okay. But all right. if they do that, they have to be the same co same color. And if one is logoed, they all have to be logoed I identically, see. which can be awkward for a uh, stocking cap. <laughs> But, Indeed. you know, so like right. the, the dead fish cap that I wore yeah. back in the old days, if my entire team <laughs> wore them, we could it's do legal. that. It's legal. All right, then. Very good. I love it. All right. Back to the actual sheet yeah. here. <laughs> this has been your hat. Uh, <laughs> hat check. <laughs> your hat check. And, okay, um, what is Zimmerman doing? He here? is running with a, he does not know that there is another what measuring device ends? literally right by him. Well, so he's, he's carrying the one from the he's far end of the sheet. coming down the middle of sheet D, middle of sheet B, to get over to sheet D, and he arrives just in time to see the other measuring device <laughs> being deployed. <laughs> and Whoops. turning around to and put it back. Was, okay. Um, <laughs> this moment of comedy brought to you by the curling club of Virginia. <laughs> uh, we also want to say what a nice draw there by Paul Luthi to sit Shot Rock top four. While I'm pontificating on pants, you're yeah. watching, watching the game. We were literally ready to get back to the action, and then we saw Dave Zimmerman <laughs> with that uh, measuring device kind of take us off, off uh, kind of put us on a tangent again. So he's coming back with the measuring device. Paul Luther threw a beautiful shot to the forefoot, and now Daniel McGurk, the skip of uh, Stroop Waffle, has to figure out what to do here. Um, I mean... Thank you for bringing us back on track. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. You know. I mean. Do you mind? Do you mind uh, with this ice? Do you think he's gonna, just going to throw a guard and try to cut him down to one, get the I force, mean, and come back so evens with the hammer? He's up. To, yeah, he's up two. He currently would be in a position to have even and hammer. He'd be up one with hammer in yeah. the sixth. It's not a bad situation. Um, and they are uh, actually they're they're looking at a seven end game also. Frankly, here on sheet B. Yeah, because yeah. it's going to be ten thirty before this end is over. Yeah. Great ice. Yeah, definitely be 10 through. So they're, unless they can, unless they really pick up the pace, they're only going to play seven. Which actually, does that change the value of the force? That's tackle? a good point. So whereas if they were playing, if they were guaranteed to be playing eight, he'd be in a situation where, yeah, by doing the force of one. He keeps his one, he keeps a one point lead and he has two hammers yeah. expected at least. Well it looks like that one. That guard that kinda overcurled a little bit, so I yeah. think that opens the door a little bit more for, for Paul. another draw in. I think if Paul draws in, correct me if I'm wrong, if he draws in a little heavy to just tap his current red, does his stone be second shot? I mean that yellow one of the that yellow one on the back's got quite that's a bit question. of the forefoot. Yeah, that is true. That's so I don't think not. so. It's yeah, I don't think if so. I think he has to. I think he has to clean draw it. Yeah. And put it completely in the forefoot. Yeah. If I were him, I'm just thinking T line, back four. Is this the hammer? This is the hammer. This is the yes. hammer. Okay, so he doesn't have to worry about. He doesn't have to worry about a, a removal attempt or anything like that. So yeah, it's a, it's a, hi, my name is Paul. 
I would like to find the four foot with the stone. Thank you. Situation. Slide is a little on bit of a, way. a little drifty slide there, but it looked like he kind of corrected it. Yeah. Paul Luthi, probably the only curler with five and under years, five or less years of experience, who curls with a taped up horn broom. Yeah. <laughs> And a, and a tuck slide. That's usually a very legacy app, but this is a little hefty. Looks heavy. I think this is going to go gonna sail through. Through. Yeah. All right. Actually, I, don't, I don't think it was ever actually even on the necessary line. Even if it yeah. stopped on the tee, I think it would have been a little too wide. All right, so that's a single for a single for omelet, omelet you hit and roll. roll. So 6-5 after 5, probably only on pace to play 7 due to the time limits. Just a reminder for those who weren't listening earlier, they are in a situation where at 11 o'clock sharp, the end that they are on will be their final end. If that happens to be the eighth end, hooray. If it is not, your game is short, sorry. Where it is right now, the games on C and D are well into their sixth end, so they're likely to make that eight, assuming, of course, that the game needs to go eight, which they're both one-point games, so it seems likely at this point. The game on B is right on that razor's edge. If they play a fast hit game for one of these two ends, they could make it, but they're probably only playing seven. The game on A, I'm not 100% sure they make six. Six, yeah, honest. no kidding. That's not true. They have 29 minutes okay. to, to, to play three stones. Okay. But. Um, oh, they got five stones. Oh, well, that changes but still, the calculus. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's how that's probably going. Okay, nice center guard there, put up by Sean Hutzko of Detroit Curling Club. And you're gonna play the come around. Yeah, that means, I mean, you're up one, you have hammer, your skip has probably looked at the clock and realizes that they're probably only playing seven. Mm -hmm. So, you want to get a two here. I mean, you always want to get a two with a hammer, sure. of course. But it is even more important now. Because before, if they will, if they knew they had two hammers left, they'd mm -hmm. be willing to take a one, get back mm -hmm. to their two-point lead. If Paul yep. gets a two, they're tied coming home with hammer. With hammer. Great. Fine. That's fine. Right. But since Paul's assuming, of course, assuming, assuming that yellow scores this end, Paul's hammer in the seventh will be the last end hammer. So you want to be, you want to be up by three in that scenario. And I think I'm pretty happy with the uh, omelet you hit and rolls uh, result that Stroopoffel threw. They kind of got that double guard now, so that was a bit of a gift. Yep. This guy's looking pretty tight. Uh, this is gonna this is gonna peel his own guard. Yeah. Or may not peel it. It may just, it may just, just be a tick. It's not that out. hard. And actually, he may have actually asked for sort of a ticky kind of thing to kind of try to. Oh, he got one in and he uh, skirts in. Yep, that's fighting. Yeah. It's definitely biting. And Center guard, one in, don't hate it. And it's way out there on the edge of the sheet mm -hmm. where it's probably not going to be a t hit target. Mm -hmm. So Paul Paul might be able to construct an end where that stone scores. Yeah. And that could be a second or third point down the road. A lot of stones to go before yeah. that's going to be a thing. Yeah. But it could, we could see that factor in at the end of this, yeah. end, no doubt. Brunch is served. It's the brunch spiel. <laughs> and brunch is preserved. At a perfect time. 10.30 is a beautiful time for brunch. This is a little on the light also side. Also light again. And by a little on the light side, I mean extremely Pretty on the light, light side. Yeah. Um, so now there's not even a nice hit to the inside of that redstone that's just sitting out there just biting the edge 12. You'd have to, so you're going to have to come from the outside of the sheet in. There's room, but... Players don't like challenging the sideline. No. And add in that at, our, at Potomac here, our sidelines are tight. They're regulation. But, but barely. They're, they're, they're as tight as they can be and be regulation. So there's not a lot of room out there. Paul looking to raise his center line stone in. Got the, I mean, that's, you could execute yeah, that better, but lovely. not by much. Um, actually, I take it back. You could not execute that better. Um, so that is a beautiful tap raise. Ooh, we got a hammer here on sheet C, halfway down C. the sheet. Hammering on C. 
It is. This is the yellow, uh, Arsley Club. Yellow drawing against two reds. Sure looks like it. And the sweepers are on this hard. I feel really like hard. They've been almost coast to coasting it. I feel like this is going to be yet another stone spin. It just come up just a little light. Is it? And is it? Sweepers is it? Are proving me wrong. I think they got it. I they think they got it. Give those sweepers a mimosa. Holy s Yeah, Actually, they sure did. more importantly, get out the AED for, the, uh, <laughs> for one of the sweepers because he looks like he is about to keel over. Wow. But what? his work pays off. They what get a brush. A one. That puts them up by two. Team Riley. That Team was a Riley. huge shot. Yes. It goes up 5-3 after six. That game is likely to go eight. And... Okay. C, yeah, C is the game that is farthest ahead on the um, speedometer. So, yeah, their game will be capable of going eight ends, assuming that the score allows it. Yeah. Which, since it's only a two point game in the seventh, seems like. All right, Paul Luthi asking his second to kind of come in behind. Sink another stuff. one in, and he sure does. Yeah, but isn't that a, that's a perfect pocket, isn't it? It sure is a perfect pocket. You hit it right between them, and they're both going. Yeah. There's a little, the, the one on the center line is a little higher, but it's not enough higher to make a difference. Um, yeah, a perfectly executed, a perfectly executed center takes Whoa. everything, and, it takes everything, and makes everything good yeah. behind. This is still a little outside. Still outside. They're trying to push it. So they're likely to hit the outside stone first, which probably means they probably don't even hit the second stone as exactly they did yep. not. Um, but they're pretty well frozen in. Paul could do a light chip out of that yellow, and his shooter would probably roll over to the edge four foot, maybe to the eight foot over on the left. And that seems to be, why is he calling it with that? I think he's key called back line. Back, yeah, I, got, I, yeah. I, just, I feel you like you should I'd be giving him a bit more? The, no, I feel Less. like I come the other way. Uh, go across slash across. Yeah. Just, just because I'm paranoid about being a little bit wide and, and interacting with those with that guard pile up front. He looks which, good for now. Frankly, uh, he's, I disagree. Oh boy. I feel like he's on the guard pile. Nope, he's well, by. Stone's starting to come. You get a better angle. Is he clear? He is, is he clear. clear. He is clear. He's clear. He's clear. Oh, lovely. That is. That, if they both stick around. That's even. That's lovely. Did it stick around? It's sure. Negative. Oh, it went out. Oh, my goodness. I thought it, it was going to stick around. Did, did okay. that touch the sideline and spin back? It matters because if it touched the sideline, it's out of play. It shouldn't be remaining there. And I can't thought tell. I, I thought I saw a spin back at the end. Yeah. But the other team skipped, didn't remove it. Now at this level, there's a question of does he actually know the rule? Mm -hmm. um, neither skip is making yeah. an issue of it, so it doesn't, doesn't really appear matter. Matter, no. It's probably not in a position where it's gonna actually impact. No, I don't think it should. Nonetheless, that was a pretty darn good shot. From it was Jamie. a. It was a pretty. I mean, they're lying too right now. There's nothing wrong. Yeah. Daniel having a hair problem, or does he have some sort of twitch? His head was doing a weird oh, thing. Oh, nice, good. Okay. All right, Stone is on its way. I feel like this is heavy. It, if unless, it clips that it clips red one, it's going to be okay, and it's going to just skirt by. Oh, to, barely. Paul is going to escort it through barely. the back line. So I'm let you hit and roll. Lying to, they do not have hammer this end. Um, so perversely, if they're going to steal, they really don't want to only steal one. Yeah, because they've got yeah, they got that. They you can try to, this one. This biter one is really starting to creep. Well, continue to yeah, creep into play. Yeah, what I'm saying is you don't want to just steal one. You want yeah. to steal. You want to steal two here because a steal of one, since it's only going to be a seven inch. Oh yeah, they'll have likely. that. Right they would be tied without Hammer coming home. Now, they just they would have just stolen, so they would have demonstrated an ability to steal. But... Puts up a guard, and the guard feels a little wide. I feel like... 
definitely coming left to right, they could come after. But come after that it's straight down the center. Yeah, play but that is not the shot that uh, Daniel is calling. Daniel is calling, I believe it's just a draw around to the button. I don't know. I think he's trying to hit this guy. You think he's coming after that? I do. Maybe, maybe, maybe I do. His, maybe he's his in off. Yeah, that's not, that's not draw line. You're right. That's a control weight. Sweepers are on it quick as though they're concerned about an overcurl. Uh, I can see the concern. Well, they just came off of it. Okay, cleared the guard. Did he get the touch? He did not. The overcurl that he should have been concerned about was, in fact, a thing that was an overcurl. So that's a second miss. And um, Time to, uh, for Paul Luther to sink a third one in. Uh, yeah, I feel like that's the yeah. call at this point. You throw center line top 12 or even sink one behind that corner guard, behind that like, guard. I feel like what he's got in mind is top 8-ish yeah. behind the, behind the, because uh, he, like I said, he, he's okay with giving up one here. Puts him down two with hammer in the last. It's not great, mm -hmm. but it's survivable. And the, the tiebreaker in this is a skip straw. It's not an extra hand. So Paul's okay with that. Um. Oh, we got a scoring update on Sheet A. It sheet looks like a has um, their sixth end. Waffle House is red, I believe. Uh, that is a correct statement. And they just took uh, three. Okay, so Puts they them up go up seven, seven to four. four. In the after the that was the fifth end. Fifth end. So that game might go seven. <laughs> um, they got a hustle. Uh, they got 18 minutes to finish this end. That's has their pace so far. They have not played an end at 18 minutes yet. 18 minutes yet. Okay, I don't know that Paul was intending to do this tap. No, I think he, he just did. shorted it. It was tight. So, okay, interestingly, Daniel is chasing the chasing the in off hit again. I feel like at this point that is a poor choice because he's got a. He's got a clear highway to the current shot still in the back. roll to the side. Roll to the side. Now, he would be in the back eight foot at that point, whereas I guess off this in-off, he's hoping that he's going to be in the top eight, which is a more powerful position. But I still feel like an open hit is a better choice than a in-off. Mm -hmm. The margin for error is larger. Now, he missed the last one. He got past it by about an inch, inch and a half on the inside. He does have about an inch more room, which should result in that plenty of room past that guard pile up front that he only just barely missed the first one. I think he is overcorrected. I think he pushed this. I think if he even makes contact, all it's going to do is push it in. It's going No, no to way. No way he's going to wow. get that double. No way. Really? <laughs> he did. Well... <laughs> Oh, that one's still close. Still I biting. don't know. It's certainly in Holy play. moly. That is a, that is a surprisingly <laughs> well executed shot. Uh, I, am going to, I am going to say well done on that. We were so engrossed in that, in that shot, and rightfully so, that we also have a scoring update on sheet D. We, uh, looks no, like we don't. There's a stone in play. Or do we have the sixth They stone? just threw it. Okay. Yeah, the fifth end just concluded, and that's going to be. The sixth end, they have just concluded. The sixth end just concluded. The they seven. haven't hung the score yet. Correct. So we don't have a scoring update. We have yeah, a. Okay. Okay. okay, the sixth end just concluded. So. But, and they're, okay, they're there we go. Now, now we're going to hang it. No, no, no. And no, 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 no. Red, two Red two goes up 6 to 3 after six ends. They. They might make eight. They're right on the. Right they've on the thrown cusp. a stone in the seventh. So they might make it if they play this at expeditious. All right, Paul is attempting to draw in. Um, Jamie was calling the sweepers off of it because he was waiting for the, the cut. line. And it took its sweet time, but here I, it comes. Is he going to get to the house? I don't feel like he is. I feel he like not. We are short. Just short. All right. Yeah, yeah, well short. So at the moment, either the house is clear, possibly, or there is a red just barely biting the back 12, also possibly. Um, from our angle, it kind of looks to me like it's probably biting, but that might be a shadow. Yeah, yeah I can't tell from our vantage point. Thankfully, we've got a tool for that. The biter bar. If it is necessary, it is available. 
This is the hammer. The uh, rarely used biter bar. So yellow obviously, well, okay, I guess not obviously. Yellow probably believes it's biting because yeah. if, it, if they thought it was out, they It'd would be not be attempting to draw it. They'd yeah. take a blank, yeah. take the hammer and the one point end coming home. So really, Paul's got to be happy with this as long as he actually as long as he doesn't steal. Conversely. Yeah, they're calling all there. Uh, yeah, he is. He's tapping his head like it's hefty. It's but coming down. It's the edge of the sheet, so it is potentially. Oh, it's coming down real hard it's now. Coming down real hard. Is it gonna make house? Is Holy it moly! Make house? Yeah, I think they're gonna get it. I think they're I'm gonna. I'm not yeah. yet convinced. Oh, they're not gonna get it. Wow. Okay, so okay. Paul now needs to. They need to make a decision. Okay, they kicked it. So one. They, it's got to be one red. I guess. So we are tied coming home. I mean, frankly, I'd almost consider running running a biter bar on that one over there at the edge of the twelve, just in case. But. They're not doing it. They so have it. But I was on the installation crew for these houses. I would have probably put it by <laughs> Just saying. All right. So we wanted a stressful seventh end, which will be the last end of this game probably. There's only 14 minutes left on the clock. The likelihood of finishing this end, especially since it's tight, since the score is tied, I'm pretty sure this is going to be their final end. I Thanks again to all the 35 viewers who are still with us after six ends in a bit. Uh, this is the brunch spiel at U.S. Capitol Curling Center. It's a five and under open. Winner goes to the USCA five and under nationals in exotic Hibbing, Minnesota. That is actually another thing that's unique about this event on the yeah. USCA calendar. It is the only national championship that is open format. Everything else is either all men, all women, two of each. Yep. Mixed doubles is one of each, obviously. That's right. um, this event, you can have a team of four men, you can have a team of four women, you can have one and three, mm -hmm. two and two. Mm -hmm. Intergender is not an issue. Mm -hmm. Whatever. It's all good. It's all good. So, although on this, well, no, actually that's not true. I was going to say we don't have very many women on the ice in this in this draw, but that's not true. There's two over on sheet D, there's a couple over on sheet A. There's a decent supply, there's a decent supply is absolutely the wrong word. <laughs> there's a decent number of female curlers on the ice in this box. Yes. Uh, there's actually a couple, there's actually at least couple one, of team, one team that is fully female. Um, which, it's a USWCA event, that the W stands for women. It's the US Women's Curling Association. Their mission is to um, improve the diversity in the game because, frankly, for the longest time, curling was kind of a male. Mm -hmm. It was kind of golf. Yep. It was kind of winter golf. Yep. Um, and we're fixing that. Um, women's curling still doesn't quite have the the uh, resources and everything that male men's curling has. Again, working on fixing that. It's going to take some time to get that numbers parity up there. Um, events like this are a good step in that direction. The USWCA made the decision several years ago that one of the ways they wanted to improve the diversity was to emphasize new curlers of all genders and denominations. Mm -hmm. So they chose to make their five and under bond spiel rather than it just being a women's bond spiel. It is an open it's format. Bond it's a bond spiel. <laughs> Um, and I believe that the U.S. Curling Association followed with that with the five and under and said, you mm -hmm. know, it's not a bad idea. Not a bad Let's idea. Let's do the thing. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, curling's one of those sports, you know, unlike track or, you know, some other event where there is a there is an advantage. physical, yeah, there's yep. an advantage to have it to being testosterone loaded. Um, curling, not so much. Yep. So you could conceivably even see a day somewhere where curling is just one single mm -hmm. gender, or not single gender, any gender. Any event. gender, any gender, any event. You know. All right, we got a couple of rocks in play now here on our feature sheet. And still, the gaps are opening up in the other games, but they're all not total blowouts. Yeah, nothing, nobody has shaken before what will be their last end. Pretty much all of these games are likely on their final end of this one, with the exception of C. C will finish this end and get to start the eighth. Yeah. Because uh, this is hammer time now? This is, uh, no, this is final yellow. Final yellow. On C. 
so they're going to go a. They may be the only ones that make it. And that uh, this game, this, this C event game, is an A event matchup. Event on so both teams uh, won their games yesterday afternoon. I think against the two teams we're watching right now. Um, I think. No. I believe the. Did I believe the teams on A are the ones that defeated these teams. Well, I know the RT team played Paul. Okay, I'm right. I know for sure. Okay. All right, I, was, yeah. I was I was I was watching a little bit of that game yesterday when I was at yeah, work. Yeah, you're right. That is RT. Okay, yeah. you're, you are correct. Yep. But so this is a B event game. The winners move on to the B event. The losers drop down into the C event, and their next game will be a winner. Will be a winner go home game. Oof. Actually, I believe it's possible that even the even the team that advances to the B will be able to win. Could be in the out game too. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's the only place really once you get to your third game where you can lose and still play another one is if you're in the A. Yeah. Yeah. This is the second Jonathan Hickey trying to hit this row of four rocks. Uh, play the, uh, the top yellow, red, red, yellow, red, yellow. Red, yellow, red, yellow. <laughs> oh, man. Red <laughs> to the back of the 12 foot. He got, go I think they're sitting yellow one, too. Yeah, that wow. is. That you is know, it. your standard four rock run back. Sure, everybody. <laughs> doesn't everybody practice on those every day? Every darn day. Every darn day. Darn I don't even think we have to juniors practice that. <laughs> um, I feel like maybe we should. Let's get the junior coordinator on the line here. All right, um, Paul Luthi asking his front end to play that come around. Play that come around. He cleared it by more than I think Paul thought it was because that's going to skirt through now. Yeah, and that has that sweeping had the effect of that stone is through the house by a yeah. significant margin. Yeah. I think it may have been through the house even otherwise. Yeah. We missed the results of the hammer on C, but Ardsley apparently stole because they're throwing first rocks. Uh, or the end, well, the end was there, was there was too much in the house. It wasn't planned. Yeah. So yeah, so they're throwing home in the eighth. We believe they're ahead at least 6-3, possibly more. So once they hang that score, we'll let you know, unless someone from the chat actually saw that, and they can even update us. I can't see the stone going down the sheet here in our future reason, but I know that the deliverer did not look happy about it. It's going to hit on that yellow, uh, it's going to be short of that red guard on our, our right hand side. I feel like he may be perfectly okay with guarding this up. He's yeah. In a situation where yeah. it's tied coming home and he has hammer, so unless Paul can bury, bury one, one in there. In there. Which the door's open. Draws there. Yeah, draw for one's sure. there, and a button, a perfectly executed t above the button draw actually is probably pretty difficult to get rid of. Starting to run out of, starting to come down to the, uh, where the uh, where the syrup meets the pancakes here. Um, How did it take us that long to say that? I, well, because it's, this, <laughs> this is where the syrup hits uh, the pancakes. I guess, yeah, you go. We can only say so, the second half, uh, towards the end of the game. Right. You're correct. Um, Jamie Belafonte trying to draw around and execute that perfect. Uh, the a wee little light. bit short. Um, okay, Meg is of the opinion looked like a steal of one for Ardsley in end seven. Thank you, Meg. That's kind of what I was thinking too, but they yep. still haven't hung that number, so we don't know for sure. Um, I'm prepared to believe you, though, which would put them up six to three, three-point lead coming home in the eighth end. If I'm Ardsley, I'm very happy where I'm sitting right now, yeah, especially when you got those two rocks in play. Where, that's a situation where you're like, yep. I can live with that. I can live with that. All right, we have five minutes left on the clock. Way too many stones. This will be the last, yeah, this will be the last end 
for our feature game here on B. And I think the last end. Well, no. they got one more. So I think they're going to be able to start their seventh end on A. That sure looks like it. Good if job. for some reason it takes them four minutes to throw this rock, which I really hope it doesn't. Possible, but not likely. And our game on D is down to they only have two stones left, so they'll probably get to make it to their eight. So basically, C and D will make will play eight. A and B will probably only play seven. Actually, by probably definitely at this point. There's yeah. no. A would have to play their entire seventh end in 15 seconds. That ain't gonna happen. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> um, but what an end! What would that be like? <laughs> so that would be like. Have you ever seen one of those ones where it's a televised game and the teams are forced to play eight ends at an elite competition, uh -huh. and after seven, it's out of hand, and yeah. neither team really wants to go. So they kind of both skips kind of turn to each other and go, do "We have to do this," and yeah. officials go, "Yes, you have to do this." And the teams go fine, and everything just zips through the house in five seconds, and spinoramas happen. Yeah, I've seen that. I it think would look like that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've never seen. I think it was against uh, Italy. The U.S. was the uh, Corey Dropkin team was playing them, and I think one of them did a spinorama. Yep. And then one, I think Joe Polo did that shot where you rotate it like really, really yep. fast, yeah, and whip it down because, the yeah, sheet. Yeah, that was actually at the. Uh, Bronze game yep. at the Worlds last yeah. year. I was, on, yeah. I was on the clock for it. Oh, cool. Um, well, not really because not. it was weird. Every single time I was on a U.S. game yeah. as the clock on the clock, Did they, they lost. Oh, um, like they went 0 and 4 through the week. <laughs> if I was on the clock, the only four games they lost. Yeah. So let's watch the uh, follow so, the hammer here on sheet A. Right. So the question was asked about score on sheet D. The answer is we don't know yet because they're still looking at their seventh end situation. We think it was a steal of one. We're I'm not, talking uh -huh. about D. Not oh, C. D. My apologies. Yes. We don't know that either. We don't know on we don't know on C. We're pretty sure that yellow took one to be up by three. Um, and in this case, red just took one in the six. On A? On A, yes. So that would put them up 8 to 4. They may, since they know this is not, the 7th would be their last end, they may shake. I think four they're figuring game. that out right now. It's a 4 point game. Well, and. And then we're going to have, it uh, looks like we're going to have Hammer here on Sheet D. Yes. This sheet is D's Curling hammer. Club of Virginia and Triangle right. against Broomstone. Second breakfast, get ready to throw the hammer. They're facing two, and they don't have a great line to do anything about it. They could tap up for one, but to put them down two without, that's not great. But cer certainly better than giving up. He's trying to come in. Nope, he wrecked on a guard. Red takes one for certain, possibly two. Looks two from this vantage point, mind, probably, and that's going to be handshakes. Okay, so Broomies did take two in the seventh end. Final score, eight to three. Congratulations to Broomies from Broomstone. They'll be moving on through to the B, rest of the, through the, into the, continued into the B event. And second breakfast will zip down to the C event. That is correct. All right, Paul Luthi over here in our future sheet getting ready to throw his first skip stone. He's got some problems. Um, yes. He's in a dilly bit pickle. He's, yeah. I still think he can get around with that draw. And based he only needs on, to get eight foot. Based on the broom, he believes it as well. Yeah. So, because uh, Vice Jamie Belafontaine has the, has the broom out there at the edge of the 12, which would be the correct broom for a draw. Ooh, he, just, he just tightened it up a bit. Now, neither team, both teams have kind of been chasing that. Well, yeah. Yellows hasn't been chasing it as hard because they're happy with their two. Uh -huh. But Paul has been chasing it with both of Jamie's stones, and neither one got the job done. And remember earlier in the in the game, we were talking about how tricky this outside line is coming in that direction. Yes, we have. It seems to be biting him right now. Yeah. That's well, the rock's away. He just needs full eight foot to count shot. Full eight foot would be shot, and he's in a The game is tied, so a steal of one wins the game. And look at this one too, Alan. It's not snapping it's either. It's not snapping, and it's, it's got, also it's heavy. Also heavy. Um, now a good if it comes over a an inside bit, no, hit roll. It's not. No, nope, it's outside. Not Almost. So yeah, that's not shot at all. Now what it is though is it is in a place where if the next stone were to come in there mm -hmm. and pop that, the probability of that stone 
rolling into the back eight foot very high. Yes. So yellow is looking like they're thinking about guarding that up. It accomplishes two things. One, it guards up the line that Paul's been yeah, chasing the draw with line. the draw. Yep. And no, and nope, okay. Tap, tap, what are they? It's now 11 o'clock, so this so is this confirmed. Is this is the days. last end. C is playing their eighth and final end. B is playing their seventh and final end, almost done. A is just beginning their seventh and final end. A's score is a fairly steep margin, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's developed. Has it developed 8-3 over there? Is that what the score is on A? Uh, it is 8-4. Eight to, eight to four. Four. So that that game may not go the full full end. Your team may run out of may run out of stop and waffles. Steam and waffles. Steam and waffles may run out of material there. All right, so we're taking a look at the house, kind of like uh, uh, Stroop waffle. Skip <laughs> Tyler and lead. I'm oh, sorry. Skip Daniel and Vice Tyler are looking at it. They have been they have been staring for a while. Um, can't blame them at this point because they know this is the end. This is the end game. Yeah, you don't have to worry about time anymore. Right. They Just have figured out. They have two stones left. Paul only has one. They are currently lying shot, and the draw line that Paul has been chasing for a better draw has proved elusive. I believe elusive mm -hmm. is the best word for it. Indeed. Yeah, they've been chasing this for. Four whole rocks, end, it seems yeah, like. The whole yeah. end, basically. So, but interestingly, it does not appear that Daniel is guarding that line up. Does he it appears he's playing a tap up. Either that or he, maybe he thinks that Red could play that raise on the center line, and he's guarding that. That's the could only that. other thing I'm it's thinking either, He's here. either guarding but the that raise. That seems like a lot of ice. He's either guarding the raise, and that is a lot of ice for that's a lot of ice for the tap. So he's probably guarding the raise. You're probably correct. And he's coming back down to look at it again. He didn't like it once he got down here. <laughs> As you may recall, earlier this game, the front end staged a successful intervention, um, <laughs> and it appears that they're thinking about that they did so again. Um, and we get a little stick fighting for <laughs> for, for for just some additional. What are you gonna do when you're the front end and they're still figuring out exactly. the shot? You're just gonna you're gonna sword fight. Gotta sword fight. Why yeah. not? Why not? Uh, you know, I mean, one of them is in a very natty New England Patriots hat, <laughs> so I gotta I, I gotta enjoy that. <laughs> um, okay, so Daniel appears to have changed his mind and is now guarding the draw line, or alternatively, attempting the draw attempting. line. Yes. Because if he gets in there first, yeah, no, yeah, he, he he just tapped that. Yeah. He tapped top 12, so he's guarding the draw. Okay, I like that's that's this is the right call for yeah. sure. Yeah, cuz the danger is if you do the draw and you slip a little past T, now mm -hmm. you give now you give a backing Get back and you for either hit the roll. raise or the draw either yeah. way. Yeah. 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 So, the question's going to be how far this is going to go. And then what's Paul going to do? Paul doesn't even know yet cuz he needs to see the results of the shot cuz it matters. All they lot. think it's really they, hot and yeah, wide. Well, although they're putting a broom on it, is that just to keep it clean? Yeah, they're not really. I think sweeping. it's yeah, they're not really sweeping. Eh? I. It is definitely hot, no question there. Um, boy, if that drips outside, is could th there's a chance that that taps the yellow into B shot, red into B shot? No, not not for that line. Never mind. All right. He, He's third now, but that's an out. Actually, that's currently shot. Yeah. Um. Ooh, that's currently shot. That gives Paul an in-off off that to the back of the forefoot. In-off or inside roll hit. Yeah, either way. Yeah. And, and I that, think that's what you meant, right? That, yeah. That, same yeah. difference. Yeah. yeah. Touch that yellow. Use that yellow to redirect your shooter back to the back of the forefoot or the eight foot. And that, boy, he could put that stone in a relatively inaccessible uh, location. Sure. We know because Paul's been chasing it all in. Yeah. So it's hard to get there. And to and his to his advantage, he's got a lot of room to roll with, and he's got a lot of cover. Yeah, so this is he's. It doesn't I, matter if he hits it and it rolls six feet. Yeah, Paul is probably saying, "Wow, thank you for that for, for changing your shot." Yeah. because that yep. result is not now. It was a miss. Yes. Strategically, if Stroop Waffle had thrown into the top twelve like they wanted, Paul wouldn't have this. Right. Right. But since it since it 
skated deep. Mm -hmm. Paul sees it. Paul is planning on using it. Not a guarantee with a line. Not at all. And if, but, this, uh, if this stone is not shot at the end of this, the game is over. It's over. No pressure. Good luck. And by no pressure, we mean literally <laughs> all of the pressure. He may turn into a diamond by the time the it is over. The stone is on its way. He no longer has any power to affect it. Sweepers are, it feels more tuning than problematic, I think. Oh boy, is this going to... he's past the guard, he's past, yeah, he's the, past guard. the guard. Did he tap it? He got the tap. How oh, he hit it too thin. It is, did it bounce back enough? It no, it did, did not. not. It Yellow too thin. is currently lying too. They don't even need to throw. That's game. That's game. Oh, and that's also game on sheet C. It looks like the uh, team from Arsley just ran um, that other team. I can't remember where they're from. Um, uh, uh, Mayfield. Mayfield out of rocks. All right, so we got two games that just ended simultaneously. Over on C, the final score is six to three. Uh, team Skebby defeating, I'm sorry, no, Team O'Reilly defeating Team Skebby. Congratulations to Team O'Reilly. They're going to move forward through the A event. And here on B, technically Stroop Waffle scores two because Red threw all of their stones. So that makes the final score nine to six over here on Sheet B. So it is actually a, a two in the seventh. That's uh, two. They got two. You're right. You are correct. So eight to six. And that um, is that over here on sheet B. So uh, sheet A, what's going on? Sheet A, we've got one, two, three. We've got six rocks to go. Okay. And we've got two in the house for yellow, wide open. All right. And yellow is, a and four point lead for red. Right. So red Waffle House out of Potomac. And. The other team is out of Bucks County. Okay. Steam and Waffle. Steam and Waffle. Steam and Waffle. So we're going to, this is so some bonus no, action here. No guards to speak of. No guards, period. Never mind not speaking of them. They don't exist. How so many stones? How many, you said how many stones Yellow had left. I'm sorry. I didn't Yellow's got three left, and Red's got three left. Okay, so Yellow has to manufacture two more points out of what they've got currently. That's going to require a couple of misses from Waffle House for that to happen. This is a five and under. Who knows what's going to happen? But if I am Waffle House, I am pretty happy I'm, I'm, with I, the situation. I, I, I have to make two hits, and I win. Yes. And I have three chances to do it. I need to get 66% on my hits. And I don't even care if I keep shooting. I just have to get rid of two yellow stones. Yep. All right, just so you know, Joe, I was able to get it on our overhead here. So oh, lovely. So can see what's going on. Waffle House, stone on the way, looking for that hit. Definitely, definitely got the That's mustard got on That's got the it. mustard on if it. If it makes contact, a stone will go away. I am concerned that is it's it not wide? making contact. That's looks my concern. Now, it's coming in nice. It's coming in nice. That's going to be right on the nose. Well, okay, not right on the nose, but enough it's gonna to do make its job. To take. Exactly. That's a great shot by Jackie Glidden. That is perfectly adequate. So, yellow is now dormy. They have four stones available to them. Three of them haven't thrown. One of them in the house. they got to score four points. One more hit. Wins the game for Waffle House, and there ain't no guards to hide behind. And we still got 32 people sticking around. Thank you very much for continuing to watch this uh, bonus coverage, we'll call it, on Sheet A here at the Five and Under Brunch Spiel, the Potomac Curling Club. Okay, I am not sure that I would be playing the hit that they're playing here. Yeah, it kind of makes some that sort of like is, tap or freeze. I, I would freeze on it because that's the only protection available to you at the moment. Yeah. And all they have to do is throw this outside, which they just did. Congratulations, you just lost the game. Very outside. That's an unfortunate um, miss. Because they don't and have enough curtains. left. That's yeah, it. That's the game. Okay, so there is your other team going on to the A event right now, Waffle House out of Potomac Curling Club. Congratulations to Reese and Jackie Glidden, Alexa Oxer, and Simon Weschler. They're going to play, I think they're going to be playing uh, Stroop Waffle in the next game. Uh, you know what? I got a bracket no, from me. No, because Stroop Waffle. Oh, you're right. Stroop Waffle. They're going to be playing Ardsley. They'll be playing Ardsley. Should be a good game. In the, that would be the round of eight. That would be the quarterfinals, I believe. Yes, that is a Saturday at 6 okay. on Sheet A. All right. So that wraps up our action here. Uh, uh, we'll be back. You'll be back also, right? I'll be back also. So you get the we'll same team. We'll be back in roughly 20 minutes uh, for draw seven. And until then, I've been Alan McNeil. And I'm Joe Rockenbach. And we'll see you in a little bit. Have a good one, everybody.